ring, Examiner. I believe that's our ring. I know this long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. No. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, a temporary delay in production at the Pine Ridge Synthetic Rubber Corporation was caused by a small fire in the feed room. But its officers are proceeding with spirits undampened. In fact, President Edwards has gone to the county seat to find an outlet for their amazing new product. As we look in on the little community today, we find Vice President Peabody in the Jotham Down store and library talking on the phone. Listen. All right, bottle of vanilla extract, can of string beans. Uh, that comes in glass now instead of a can, Miss Sea Strong. Yes, Mom. Glass of string beans, glass of tomatoes, corn, glass of pepper. Uh, no, wait a minute, that comes in a cardboard thing now. Yes, Mom. All right, cardboard of pepper. Anything else now? Uh, no, Mom, I can't deliver it right away. i got to wait till Lum gets back from the county seat. Well, he went in to see about uh, some stuff for our synthetic rubber. Or, uh, I mean, uh, well, it weren't nothing important. Well, I'll get him over to you as quick as I can. All right. Goodbye. Oh, they cut down. Hey, they you got to be uh-huh. careful about talking about our rubber company. Oh, Lom, I never heard you come in. This is still a secret corporation, and we've got to keep it that way for a while yet. We can't even let nobody in this town know we're even making anything back here. Boy, Lom, they're going to know we're making something. They see all them bottles back there on that stove and everything. Well, keep them out of the feed room. Don't let them get back there. Well, they could smell it up here in the front of the store when that stuff's cooking. Well, tell them we're making something else then. What? Well, I don't know. What could we be making? Huh? What could we be making back here? I don't know. Soap. Soap? Well, I don't know how to make soap. Well, let's see. What? Well, that don't make no difference, no way. I know how to make laminate. I'd make that. I'd tell them I'm making laminate. Well, they wouldn't believe that this time of year. No, ice water I'm pretty good at making, but you don't cook that. Just put ice in plain water. Well, we can study up something, just so they don't find out about us making rubber. Yeah, well, I never said nothing about to me a sea strong. No, but you almost did. No, I catch myself in time, though. Dog, you got back quicker than I figured you would. Yeah, well, I caught a ride back in the mail hack. Oh. And another thing, Abner, what are you doing in my private office here? I had to come in here to answer the phone. You built your office right around it. Ain't no other way I can get the phone that I know of without coming in here. That's right, ain't it? Why, sure. Well, I built it in there special so I could have a telephone in my private office, but I plumb forgot about folks calling in grocery orders. Yeah, we might just have it took out altogether, Lum. I get tired of hearing that thing ring anyway. No, that wouldn't help none. Well, I'll have to figure that out later on. Uh, Get Grandpap in here, Abner. We're going to have a board of directors meeting. We are? Yeah, Grandpap's back in the feed room working, ain't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. You want me to write him one of them uh, inner office communications? Yeah, or no, no. No, we ain't got time for that now. Just call him in. This is some important stuff we got to take out. No, Grandpap! Grandpap, come into Lom's office, board of directors meeting. I'm busy, Abner. Lom says it's important and hurry up. Well, all right. Did you see anybody at the county seat about the synthetic rubber, Lom? Yeah, and I believe I got some good news for us, too. Good news? <laughs> uh, what, what is it? Well, I'll tell you in just a second. That's what I want to take up at this director's meeting. Oh, I'd love to know what it is. Hurry up, Grandpa. I'm coming, I'm coming. Well, go ahead, start the meeting. I'm ready. Well, come on inside the office. Yeah, sit down, Grandpap. Come Don't on just inside. Lean over the top of the petition there. I can't conduct no directors meeting with half the vice presidents gawking at me over the walls of my office. Yeah, come on around here. Come through the door. Get all inside. All right, all right, sassy fresh. Such a pretty prattle. Yeah, come on in. Now that's better. Never will get no rubber made this way. Now just sit down, Grandpa. I'll go ahead, Lum. Go ahead. I can't wait. Well, fellow vice presidents, as you know, I went into the county seat today and 
Wait a minute. What about you, Cedric? Ed? Oh, he's out looking for some stretch berries. He ain't come back yet. Well, I reckon we won't need him no more. Oh, no, I can't wait that long. What is it? Well, I went to the county seat, and I finally got in to see some fellow there at the county, at the courthouse. Ah? Uh-huh. Mr. Dunn, I believe he said his name was. Hmm. He works for the government. Secret Service Department. Secret Service? Yes, sir. Is that the department you went to? Why, sure, we want to keep this idea a secret, don't we? Oh, sure. What's the matter with me? Yeah, that's the right place to go, all right. I never know the giver man had a special department for keeping secrets that way before. Well, what what did the fella say to you? Wait a minute. Dad got on that phone. See who it is, Abner, and tell him to make it short. Oh, yeah. I'll get shut up right quick. Hello. Jot him down store and library. Abner Peabody doing the talking. Oh, what is it, Miss Simpson? Uh-oh, Sister Simpson. Please. Well, it ain't God. our fault you never got no pineapple. Well, we weren't able to get none from the wholesale house, that's why. Yes, Mom, but... Well, I'm trying oh, to tell trying you... trying to reason with her, Abner. Oh, what ought I do, just hang up? No, she'll just keep calling up and interrupting Oh, yes, yeah, she'll call back. Just leave the receiver off the hook and let her talk. Oh. Just let it hang down there. Yeah, all right, stop it right there. <laughs> She'll never even know you ain't listening, because she never gives you a chance to get a word in edgeways, no way. No, no, that's a good idea. She'll more likely run on for an hour or two. Oh, at least that's mad as she is now, bowl me up for an hour and a half. Uh, what did this Mr. Dunn tell you, Mom? Well, at first, he was pretty skeptical about oh, it. Oh, yeah. He was what? Skeptical. Wouldn't believe we'd actually discovered a new easy way to make synthetics rubber. Oh. But I just kept talking and talking, and finally he said he'd like for us to send him some samples of our rubber. Samples? Yeah. Well, won't he find out how we make it then? No, I don't think so. And even if he did, he'd keep the secret. He would. Don't huh? forget, he's in the Secret Service. That's his business. Keep oh, sure. Secret. Yeah, sure. That's right. And here's the good news. He said he'd see that it got to some certain department, and if it turned out to be actual synthetics rubber, the government would start paying uh, uh, paying big prices for it and buying every single bit of it we could make. They will? Yeah. And they'll give a good price for it, too. Well, good for them. <laughs> I granted, we're a practical million or a thousand heirs right now, Abner, you know. <laughs> good for us. Hooray. And Hooray. what's more important than that, we're doing uh, something good for the Army by making that rubber, too. Why, sure we are. By the way, Grandpap, how much rubber have you got made up so far? Yeah, let's see. Uh, you mean including today? Yeah, yeah. Well, including today, all totaled up. Uh, let's see, uh... We ain't got none. None? Why, you and Cedric had a big batch of it mixed up there the other day. I seen it myself. Yeah, but when that fire broke out in the feed room, I had to use it to put out the fire with. Oh. Throw the whole tub of it on the flame. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, ain't you got some cooking back there today? No, I've been too busy trying to repair the feed room. Yeah, he has, Mom. Facts is, I've been helping him do that in betwixt gross orders. Mm, Grannies, I promised that Mr. Dunn I'd send him them samples tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, you reckon you could get down early in the morning and mix up a big dollar full of it, Grand Bad? Oh, I reckon so. I'll try anyway. Well, I wish you would, because this is important. No, oh, I don't believe he can get it dead before the mail hack leaves here in the morning no long. Well, I don't want to send it in on the mail hack. I want to have a great big box of it and send it with a truck line. Truck line? Yeah, that'll show right there that Pine Ridge's business is starting to pick up around. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that's a good idea. Keep him from taking that truck ride over there to Big Fork. All right, just a minute. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What's that uh-huh for? I just keep Sister Simpson happy on the phone. Now. Oh, I see. Well, it's all settled then. You'll be down early in the morning, Grandpa. Yep. Yeah. Oh, here's something else, fellas. This is importance, too. Have you got that formula for the rubber wrote down anywhere as Grand Bab? Yeah, I got it wrote down on the envelope. Got it hanging on a nail in the feed room. Well, tear it up. Tear it up? Yes, sir. Destroy it. Get shut of it. Burn it or something. Huh? We can't take no chances on spies getting hold of that piece of paper. Oh, oh. That'd ruin everything. Yeah, yeah. Might even lose the war first, for all I know. We just can't take a chance. Well, now, what if Grandpap can't recollect how to make it, though, without looking at the farmer for it? Mom? Well, he's just got to memorize it, that's all. Oh. Oh, I don't need to memorize it. I know it by heart already. I can say it forwards or backwards. Here's how I make it. I take them stretch berries. Well, wait a minute. Don't tell us. I don't want nobody to know it but one man, and that's Grandpap. Don't tell it to Cedric or nobody, not even me. 
one now, Law must tell us in the company or to know what we're all vice president. That don't make no difference. We got to keep this an absolute secret. Well, now, none of us is going to give it away long. Not on a purpose, no, Abner, but you take Cedric now. He's all a saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yeah. He's a good boy, but he ain't long on sense. You know that. No. By the way, he don't know the formula, does he? I don't reckon he does. No, all he knows is about putting the stretch berries and the sweet gum in it. Well, that's all I know, too. Well, that, I know you store it while you're cooking it, but I know that much, that's all. But that is all, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, good. Now, uh, now listen, Mom, I wouldn't tell nobody, though. If I knowed it, honest, I wouldn't now. Well, you might. Sometime you might talk in your sleep and tell it to Elizabeth or something. Uh, or maybe some spies might kidnap me and you and... They torture us till we give them the formula. Oh, my goodness. But if we didn't know it, we could never give it to them. No, I never thought about that. Well, what if they kidnap Grandpa? Well, that's our biggest problem right there. But there's two things we can do. First, I'll pint Cedric as vice president in charge of garden, Grandpa. That's a good idea. Oh, yeah. my goodness. We make him stick by Grandpa every minute of the time. Never let him out of his sight. That's the thing to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You mean sleep with me, too? Yes, sir. That ain't a bad idea. No, sir. Keep Cedric with you all the time. Just let him stay over at your place. I don't like Cedric, though. Well, you better learn to like him, because he's going to have to be with you, Grandpa. Yeah, try to learn to love him. Yeah, that's the thing to do. And the other thing is that we can't let nobody in the world know that Grandpa knows the formula. Can't let nobody know it. Not a single solitary soul. Not even Elizabeth or Charity or nobody. No, sir. Nobody finds it out. Well, good. Now, that's all settled. The meeting's adjourned. Grandpap, you better get home now and get to bed early. Er, no, wait a minute. You better wait till Cedric gets here to guard you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abner, get on the phone and see if you can locate Cedric. I will. Sister Simpson's off the phone by now. Well, see if she is. Hello? Yeah, she's off. Er, Mom? Hello, what? Doggies, I don't know. I never thought of that. Just a minute, I'll ask Lom. What does she want? She wants to know how Cedric can guard Grandpap at night if he's going to work down there at that defense plant at night. Why, he can just... Uh... Oh, my goodness. Sister Simpson must have heard every word we said. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. Hi, Dog Islam. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down at Pine Ridge. Well, yesterday, Lum made arrangements to send samples of the synthetic rubber to a government representative at the county seat. And if the rubber proves usable, the old fellows will have an immediate market for their new product. As we look at on the little community today, we find Lum and Abner in the John and Down store waiting for Grandpappy Spears, the sole possessor of the rubber formula, to arrive and start working. But we're about to that Grandpap be anyways. Supposed to get here early, and here it is, 9.30 already. Call up his woman, Charity, and see if she's heard anything more. Lom, we just called her up. All she knows is that Grandpap left the place about two hours ago. Well, if he don't show up pretty soon, we ain't gonna get no rubber samples made up in time to send to that Giverman feller today. Well, I don't know where else to look for him. We tried the barber shop and the restaurant and Grandpa Master's place. Of course, he might be just hiding out somewhere so Cedric can't guard him. He hates for Cedric to guard him. Yeah, that might be it. Stubborn old coot. What's he got again, Cedric, anyway? Oh, I don't think it's nothing special. He just don't like the idea of some young feller guarding him that way. He says he can take care of himself. Ah, cradle trap. Well, that's what he says. You don't know what danger he's in. I know it. Well, he's running a rubber corporation, I can tell him that. Here's our big opportunity to get the government behind us and what happens. Our vice president in charge of mixing and cooking don't show up. 
Well, the government weren't going to start buying rubber from us right today, was they, Long? Weren't they going to test them samples first? Yeah, but we know the tests will come out all right. Oh, yeah. No doubts about that. No, no. Now, we got a formula for real, actual, genuine imitation synthetic rubber. Yeah, yeah. Stretches and bounces like rubber, don't it? Oh, sure, it does that, yeah. And Cedric made a slingshot out of some of it. Yeah, I've seen it. A pair of rubber heels for his shoes. Yeah, yeah. Grandpap made himself a pair of sleeve garters, didn't he? Yeah, uh, of course, they weren't awful good-looking ones, old arm. He embarrassed his woman, Charity, half to death when he taken off his coat and shirt last Sunday to show them to Charlie Redfield. Well, if he don't get here in a few minutes, we're just out of luck. That's all we are to it. Well, Lom, I believe we ought to let Grandpap write that down at Farmland. Tell it to me or you or somebody. We could be back there mixing up some rubber right now if we know what went in it. No, no, it's better to have that formula in just one place, in Grandpap's head. Mm. That way, there ain't hardly no chance of spies getting hold of it. Yeah, but what if the spies has kidnapped Grandpap? Or man-napped him, I reckon he'd call it. He ain't no kid no more, not old fella like him. No, he ain't been kidnapped. Granny, you don't reckon he has been kidnapped, do you? Well, he might be. Long as Sister Simpson overheard us talking yesterday, why, you know everybody in town knows about our rubber discover by now. And the spies are more likely here to too. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? Why, sure. He's been kidnapped just sure as well. Granny, as I ought to went over there and guarded him myself, is what I ought to did. I just hope they ain't torturing him. Torturing him? Will they sure enough do that? Oh, yeah. Put hot irons to his feet and all that to make oh, him talk. Oh, my goodness. They'll do anything to get him to tell that for him. Why, them snakes in the weeds. Yeah, we better go over and get to town marshal, old Uncle Henry Lunsford, and get up a searching party. Yeah, that's what we got to do. Get my hat and yeah. coat off the yeah, wall. Yeah, I'll get them. I uh, reckon whereabouts we ought to start looking, down the swamps along the river? No, I don't much think they'd be down there in weather like this. Them spies wouldn't go there. It ain't their cells they want to torture. It's Grandpap. You want your muffler, too? No, this is enough. Come on, let's get going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I reckon what direction you want to head out in, Lom? Or, uh, watch out for that ice on the porch there, Lom. It's all for slippery. Yeah, for goodness sakes. I thought I told you to sprinkle some ashes on the porch here or get shut of the ice one. I was going to, but, well, I've just been so busy with Grandpap. Or... Wait a minute. I believe I heard our phone ringing. I thought I heard that thing. It would have to ring at a time like this. Well, better go back and answer it, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, might be them spies calling up. Er, no, they wouldn't call us. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Get back in out of the cold. If it's a grocery order, tell them we're closed temporary, and tell them the government froze all our stock or something. Well, it's cold enough for that to happen today, I believe. Hello, John, I'm down store and library, Abner Peabody on this end. Stores closed. Huh? Oh, howdy, Dick. <laughs> no, it ain't actually closed. I just said that. Do what? Help you get shut of who? Tell him we call him back, Edna. For the land sakes, is he over there? Well, I do know. Uh, just a minute. Mom, Grandpap's over at Dick Huddleston's store. He is? Yeah, been over there for a couple of hours arguing with Dick about buying a pair of shoes. For goodness sakes, buying shoes? Yeah. Grandpap brought in stamp number 17 and claims that that's all he needs to get the shoes. Dick can't make him understand he's got to pay good money for them. Oh, to goodness. He's threatened to lawsuit Dick and everything else. Here, give me the phone. Yeah, you take it. Get him straightened out. He's mad, Dick. Hello, Dick. Listen, uh, let Grandpap have the shoes and we'll pay for them. Huh? Yeah, and then send him over here right quick. On a fist fight, Dick. Yeah, tell him we're waiting on him. Yeah. Oh, not at all, Dick. Proud to help you out. Yeah, all right. Goodbye. <laughs> here we was looking all over town for Grandpap, and all the time he's right across the road from us. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing Dick called before we got hold of Uncle Henry and got up a big searching party. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought Grandpap bought himself some shoes a few weeks back, come to think about it. Uh huh? Wasn't them new shoes he had during Cedric's trial? Them that squeaks aloud? Oh, yeah, yeah, they was brand new ones. But uh, Aunt Charity oiled them up for him, and that stopped them from squeaking, so. And Pap just up and give them to the Salvation Army. For goodness sake. Yeah. Love to have squeaky shoes. Oh, he won't have a pair that won't squeak, no. Can you see him coming across the street yet? Huh? 
Oh, man, it's somebody coming out the door over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he's just coming out the door there at Dick's door. Dog Islam, uh, come over here to the window and watch old grandpap. Watch him, man. Watch him walk here. <laughs> he must have got himself the stiffest pair of shoes in that whole store. Just look at it. Yeah, I see. Well, get out of the way. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Looks <laughs> like a cat walking on, on fly paper. <laughs> He'll have to get Cedric to break them things in for him. He never will be able to handle them all by himself. I know that. Just to hurry up. He never will get them rubber samples sent off in time. No, no. Better go back in the feed room and get the stove started and put the biler on. We ain't got a minute to lose. Yeah, yeah, I'll get everything ready for him. Just to... Oh, my goodness. Uh, Lom, look there. Look What's there. the matter? Grandpap fell down, slipped on that ice out there. Look oh, at him. Oh, Granny's ice feared that happened. Come on, I hope he never broke yeah, the Yeah, yeah, this helping poor old Grandpap. First he gets kidnapped. First, no, he never got kidnapped. What Grandpap. Grandpap, are you hurt? Speak to me, Grandpap. I dog as long I believe he's out to look at him. Grandpap, can you get up? He don't look like he can even move. Where are you hurt? Talk to us. Hey, he must have got a good whop on the head when he hit the porch there. Long yeah, look at his eyes. Yeah, he's Goes out. back in there like a dying calf in a hailstorm. He's plumb unconscientious. Let's see, what did that first aid course say we ought to do in a case like this? Huh? Artificial perspiration. He, he said to keep them laying down and keep them warm. Keep him warm. Yeah, we can't do that. Him laying on ice there, though. No, we better get him up in there. Get him inside. Grab hold of his legs there. Yeah, I'll get him. Glad old grandpap ain't very heavy. Let's go now. Come Be on. Be careful now. We don't slip on the ice, too. No, I got him. I got him. I got him. If you'd have sprinkled them ashes out here like I told you to, this never would have happened. Yeah, or Wait, to me, did it. I'll hold around here and get the door yeah, open. Yeah, I'll hold him. Go ahead. Don't let the door bang again. Anymore. I won't. I got him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go on in. That's it. Might as well take him on back to the feed room, I reckon. Yeah, I might him. as well take him right back there. Oh, me. Dog is long. I believe he's coming, too. Oh, my head. My head. Oh, my goodness. My head. Hey, uh, Grandpap. Uh, can you hear us, Grandpap? Are you hurt bad? Don't try to make him talk yet. Wait till we get him some. Sit down some. Yeah, how about that chair right over there, Long? Yeah, that'll do. Easy now. Yeah, don't get excited now, Grandpap. We ain't gonna hurt you now. There oh, you are. Oh, my goodness. What's happened? What's happened? Yeah, that fix you. Everything's gonna be all right now, old fella. Yeah, just sit there and rest for a few minutes, Grandpap, and I think you'll feel as good as new again. Abner, get the stove started and put a biler on. What, you reckon Grandpa will be able to mix any rubber today, Long? He... Well, no, we'll have to do the mixing. Huh? Just have him tell us what to put in it. Well, I thought just him was supposed to know what went in it. Well, them rules are changed now. It's an emergency case. He can oh. tell us and we can forget it right quick. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to. Well, we got to get them samples made up today. Hurry up, get the stove started. Well, I'm going to, going to. How you feeling, old boy? Oh, my goodness, it's so foggy. Whereabouts am I at, anyway? You're with us, old-timer. Everything's going to be all right. Just take it easy. Well, I reckon everything's ready to start cooking the rubber now, Long. Good. Now, what do we put in first, Grandpap? I uh, wish that fog would clear up. Everything's a hazy and mixed up. What's the matter with him? It is foggy. He's still a little dazed, Albert. He must Listen, be. Grandpap, I hate to rest you, but we got to mix up some rubber in a hurry, so you'll have to tell us what's in the secret formula. Yeah. Grandpap, he's talking to you. Huh? Can't you hear him? Me? Yeah. What did he say? He said, what's the formula? Formula? Say, what happened anyway? How, how'd I get here? Oh, well, you just had a little fall out there in front of the store, and we carried you in here. Oh, well, that's sorry of you. Help me out that way. Wish that fog would lift. Oh, he's glad to do it for you. Now, now, now tell us that formula, old fella. Oh, yeah, formula. Yeah, yeah. Think hard now, Grandpap. Concentrate on it. Formula, formula. Formula for what? For what? Well, for making the rubber, of course. Rubber? I don't believe I know no formulas for making rubber. Huh? Why, sure you do. You, you claimed the other day that you know that as well as you know your name was Milford A. Spears. Spears? Name sounds kind of familiar. Who's that? Who's that? 
For the land's sakes, don't you even know who you are? Everything's just so mixed up and hazy. Who am I, anyway? Oh, my goodness. Did you hear that, Long? Yeah. Hey, Granny, you know what's happened, Abner? Huh? Grandpap's got amnesia. Amnesia? Yes, sir. Well, poor old feller. First he can't recollect who he is, and then he gets amnesia on top of it. Poor old grandpa. Well, the worst thing is, he's the only one that knows the formula to making our synthetic rubber. I believe that's our ring. I know this long, I believe you're right. Well, see. Hello, John I'm Down Store. This is Lum and Abner. Hello. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the uh, Pine Ridge Synthetic Rubber Corporation has indeed fallen upon dark days. For Grandpappy Spears, the only person who knew the secret formula for making the rubber, fell on the ice yesterday and now is a victim of amnesia. And the unfortunate vice president in charge of mixing and cooking is unable to remember the formula or his name or anything else. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down Storm Library. He's talking on the telephone. And a bucket of lard. Is that all now, Miss Levin? Mom? Oh, yes, Mom, I reckon it is the truth about Grandpa. Well, he don't recollect who he is or nothing. Don't even recognize me in long. You hear it, what? Uh-huh. Well, I do know. <laughs> For the land sakes. Yes, Mom. Well, I guess it is. Hey, Abner, did you know... Well... Oh, excuse me. I-, I believe that must just be this some gossip, though. Yes, Mom. I hadn't heard it. All right, Miss Blevins, I'll get your groceries over to you sometime today. All right, much obliged. Goodbye. Morning, Abner. Oh, morning, Mom. Say it long. Miss Blevins said that she heard that Grandpa went out of the house last night and never come home again. Well, that's the truth. The truth? Well, how could it be me and you taking Grandpa home yesterday and putting the bed on the sofa there ourselves? Well, I know we did. And we stayed right there with him till after Doc Miller had been there and left. Yeah, but it was after that when he left. Oh. Uh-huh. He must have waited till his woman, Charity, went to sleep and then got up and dressed and snuck out of the house. Well, I do know. Now I reckon what he could have went to. I can tell you that, too. Oh. Uh-huh. He went over to Sister Simpson's boarding house and got himself a room over there. Sister Simpson? Yes, sir. Well, what about you find that out? I got that direct from Sister Simpson. For the land sake. Run into her on the street on my way to the store just now. Well, I do. Got himself a room over at the boarding house, huh? Yeah, he must have figured he's in a strange house when he's at home. Must have thought Charity was a strange woman, so he just got out of there. Huh. Well, that's right. He don't even recollect that Charity is his woman, does he? No, he don't recollect nothing about it. No, no, that's right, yeah. That amnesia is funny stuff, ain't it? It must be. Just draws a curtain on your past, what it does. Yeah, yeah. Penny huh. Jordan saw Sister Simpson. She was buzzing with excitement. She thought she'd got herself hold of some juicy gossip. Gossip? Yes. Yeah. She thought Grandpa and Cherry had had a fight or something, and they were busting up, maybe even going to get a D-boy. <laughs> Didn't she know about him having amnesia? No, but after I told her about that, she said that she thought he did that sort of to you. Why, of course he does. Said he appeared like he didn't hardly know her at, her at first and nothing. Else. Well, I do. Acted more like some stranger than Grandpa, she said. Poor old fella. Well, I reckon one of us better go over to the boarding house, Lum, fetch him over here, or take him home one. Well, he ain't at the boarding house now. He ain't? No, Sister Simpson said he left there now. Left? Yeah. Said he going out and looked the town over. Said if he liked the place, he might settle down here. Settle down? That's what he said. Why, well, he's lived right here in Pine Ridge for over 40 years. Yeah, but he don't know that, Abner. He thinks he's some sort of a town fellow. Some sort of a town? You mean a big town? Yeah. What? 
what town do you think he's from? Well, according to Dick Huddleston... Has he, Dick seen him? Yeah, Grandpa stopped in there this morning and tried to buy some snuff. Snuff? Why, he don't use snuff. He does now, I reckon. <laughs> anyway, according to Dick, he thinks he might be from Toledo, Ohio. Toledo? Yeah. Well, what makes him think he's from there? Don't ask me. He's never even been close to Toledo or Ohio, neither one. I know he ain't. And here's something else. He thinks that maybe he's either a fellow named Davis or one named Davenport. Davenport? Yeah, Buster V. Davenport, he calls himself. Where in the world did he ever get such a name as that for himself? Well, it seems that when he got up this morning, he seen that, that name BVD in the label on his underwear, so he figures that must be his initial, so he made up that name to go with it. <laughs> yeah, Fad, don't you know. So <laughs> wonder you never give his first name as Fleece Line or something like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dick said, Caleb, we hunt come in the store there, and Grandpap walked up to him and said, Howdy do, sir. I'm Buster V. Davenport of Toledo. Nice little bird you got here. Little bird? That's what he said. Oh, he thinks he's some great big city feller, huh? Boy, likely. <laughs> I do know. I know, Miss Long, you don't reckon that Grandpap's just sort of pranking us, do you? Pranking us? Why, sure, he might be just putting this whole thing on just to scare us or something. Might be doing this to show us how important he is in a synthetics rubber corporation. As long as he's the only one that knows the formula for making the rubber, why, he might be just trying to show us that we can't get along without him. Well, that's the truth. We can't. Well, no. Without him, we ain't got no rubber or nothing else. No. We ain't even got no corporation, I don't reckon. He might be just doing this to get to be president of the company or something, too. No, I don't think Grand's have to do nothing like that. You either. can't tell. Besides, you hear Doc Miller say he actually has got amnesia. You hear that yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. And I know Doc wouldn't tell no stories. Oh, no, he's honest as he can be, old Doc. Is. No, this is the real thing. We gotta study up some way to make Grandpap get his memory back. Yeah, yeah, got We to. don't know. I don't know what'll happen. Well, no, no. Sir. Without that rubber, we can't increase our trucking business to where the state government will let us keep the truck line. No, no. Then they'll ride it through Big Fork and Pine Ridge will just dry up and blow away. Then Grandpap can go back to Toledo. And uh, Douglas, he sure got everything to where we never will get it straightened out. I'll say that for him. Just got to get his memory back. That's all there to it. Well, how in the world are we going to do something like that, Mom? I don't know. Doc Miller said that that's something that's been baffling doctors and scientists for millions and millions and thousands of years. No, oh, because that's a long time. He'd think they'd have catched on to it by this time, wouldn't he? Doc says sometimes seeing old familiar things would bring back their memories. Familiar things? Yeah, like, say, for instance, if Grand Bap would see his favorite book, that almanac laying on the library table there. He might just pick that up and start reading it absent-minded like, and all of a sudden he'd recollect who he is and everything. Well, I do know what. Here, let's find him. Get him to read the almanac then. All as before, I couldn't stand to hear him read that thing out loud all day, but if it'll cure him, I'm for it. Well, I don't know for sure whether that'll work or not. It's just something we can try, though. Yeah, yeah, try anything. I'm for it. Doc told another interesting case about uh, where a fellow with amnesia heard some piano playing one day, and all of a sudden he jumped up and said, Hi, Granny, that's it. I'm a piano player. Oh, yeah. And he rushed over there and sat down and started playing the piano. He did. According to uh, Doc, he did. For the land sex. Well, let's get Grandpap over the church. Let him play the piano. <laughs> I'd love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me, I bound you he'd be surprised to know he can play the piano all of a sudden, won't he? <laughs> Wait a minute, Abner. I, I almost you... wished I'd get Amnesia so I could learn to play the piano. There's something I've always wanted to do would just well, love to play Abner, the piano. that don't mean you can learn to play that away. Huh. That was just one special case Doc was telling about. It, it wouldn't work for Grandpap. Nor for you, neither one. Wouldn't, huh? Of course not. Oh, well, I don't reckon I want to get amnesia then. Just between me and you, Abner, I figure the best thing for us to do is to hit Grandpapa a good whop right on top of the head. Hit him? Yeah. Or push him off of something so as he'll land on his head. Well, now, I don't think you ought to be mean to him, Mom. It weren't his fault he got amnesia. He never meant to fall down that way. I know it weren't his fault. Doc Miller said that what Grandpap needed most was rest and quiet. 
So I don't believe you'll get any worse being mean to him. I ain't being mean to him. Well, I wouldn't say it. Hitting a feller on top of the head was exactly being nice to him. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, lawmakers, taking on an old feller like him. I ain't trying to pick on him. Now, if you want to fight somebody, I dog it off this fight you any time you want to, Lum. But I ain't going to stand around and see you beat on poor old grandpa. I wasn't trying to beat him up. I just wanted to bring him You could him at in. least wait till he gets well before you jump on him. He's sick, Lum. He's got a amnesia. He needs rest and quiet. I know all that. For all we know, he might be laying down beside the road somewhere. Two weeks to go on. Might be dying right now, for all we know. I know he's weak and all that. Poor old fella. Laying there, wasting away. Not a friend in the world. Why, well, he's got friends. Well, not since he's become that Buster V. Davenport, or whatever he called himself. Nobody knows him by that name, Lom, and he don't know nobody else. Oh, that's right. And you know him. Grandpa don't make friends fast neither, Lom. Poor old, weak, lonesome fella. No friends, no strength, no nothing. Poor old fella. Oh, for goodness sake, Abner, stop carrying on and answer the phone. I feel too bad about Grandpa to talk to anybody, Lom. Oh, silly. Pick up that receiver. All right. I don't think I'll be able to carry on, though. Hello. Jot him down, store and amnesia. Uh, library. Abner Peabody doing the talking. Jarred out of his head with a stick of dynamite. Mom? Oh, just a minute. I'll call him. It's for you, Lom. She said she wanted to talk to the Justice of the Peace. Justice of the Peace? Yeah. Who is it? I don't know. Said her name was Millbank, I believe she called herself. Millbank? Yeah. Oh, I know. I, I think that's that new woman that's staying over there at Sister Simpson's board now. Oh, is that her name? Yeah. I couldn't yeah. recollect it. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Justice of the Peace speaking. What do you want, ma'am? Yes, I do, but I'm feared I'm too busy to do any marrying today. Better do it, Tom. We can use the two dollars to buy flowers for Grandpa. Oh, you want a loaf, huh? Oh, well, all right. Come up to the store, then. I'll perform the ceremony. Uh, better give me your names and addresses, and I'll have the license ready for you. Yeah. Have me write this down. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Olive Millbank of Pine Ridge. Olive Millbank. All right, and your husband, vacuum cleaner salesman. Back at the odd name. Uh-huh. No, I mean his name and address. Huh? Oh, my goodness. What is it, Lon? Buster V. Davenport of Toledo, Ohio. Ha! I believe that's our ring. I know this long, I believe you're right. Now, see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Grandpappy Spears' amnesia is starting to get him into trouble. Yesterday, he decided that he must be a vacuum cleaner salesman from Toledo. And his first act was to propose to one of his customers. Luckily, they called on Lum, who is Justice of the Peace, to do the marrying. So Lum was able to talk Grandpap out of it and keep him from being a bigamist. As we're looking on a little community today, we find Abner at his home... He's just entering the kitchen where his wife, Elizabeth, is washing dishes. Oh, say, Liz, 
Elizabeth, before I leave, I want to tell you Buster V. Davenport will be over here sometime this morning. Who'll be over? Buster V. Davenport. That's a new name that Grandpap's calling himself now. He thinks he's a vacuum cleaner salesman from Toledo, Ohio. For the land sake, sick silliness. What's he coming over here for? I got work to do. He's going to sell you a vacuum cleaner. Or at least what he thinks he is. A vacuum cleaner? Yes, Mom. Laws wouldn't have one of the contraptions in the house. Be scared to death of it. What? You don't have to buy one. Fact is, you better not buy one. Now, don't fret yourself. I got enough to worry me without one of them things around the place. Little Pearl of being away in that nurse's school and all. You just better tell Grandpap not to come over here today. Well, me and Lum's done told him to come over. We said that you might be a customer for him and his vacuum cleaner. Well, what's the use of sending him over here if I don't aim to buy one from him? Well, Elizabeth, he ain't actually got a vacuum cleaner to sell. Somebody down at Dick Huddleston's store told him he was a vacuum cleaner salesman, so he's out trying to sell them. See, besides the idea of this is just to try to get his memory back and cure up his amnesia. Has he still got that? Why, sure. Well, I ain't got no remedies for amnesia or whatever it is. Now, if he had a chillblains or sunstroke or yellow jammers or... Now, listen, Elizabeth, here's the idea. See, me and Mom are trying to get Grandpap to go to all the familiar places in town and see if some of them won't make him recollect who he is. Law, sounds plumb addle-headed. Well, it might work now. Doc Miller says it might. You want Grandpap to get himself well, don't you? Well, I reckon so. But if he don't get his memory back in five minutes, I'm going to take a broom and scoot him right out of here. I can tell you that. Well, you ought to at least give him ten minutes. Them memories don't come back to a fella very fast, I don't think. I'll tell you what you do. Uh, let him sit there in a parlor in his favorite rocking chair. That ought to help him recollect. Well, I see. I ain't a promising nothing, though. Well, do what you can for him. I just wanted to explain everything to you before I left. I'll see you around noontime. Wait a minute, Abner. Uh, ain't there something else you're supposed to do before you leave? I can't think of nothing. Abner, you come back out here in the kitchen, get a dish towel off that rack, and get to work. Now, listen, Elizabeth. Abner, you promised you'd help dry the dishes when little Pearl went away. Well, Lord me, Elizabeth, that's a woman's work. What if Grandpap catch me doing this? I'd never hear the last of it. He don't know who you are. Go on, get to work. Oh, all right. Dad, blame it anyway. And carefully don't break none today, neither. I won't break none. I wish little Pearl never had went to that nursery school. I'm a good mind to write her and tell her to come right home. Now, that ain't no way to talk. According to the hearing we got yesterday, Pearl's are doing right well at that school. Uh-huh. What you reckon she meant she, uh, ate lunch with an intern? I don't know. More likely she ate at one of them our cafeteria places. You know where they have to line up with a tray and get their vittles in time. Abner, don't wipe that dish. It ain't been washed yet. Huh? Oh. Wait, oh. don't empty it out. There's grease in there. I know it's grease. I can tell grease when I see it. That's why I'm throwing it away. But I don't want it thrown away. I'm saving it for the giver man. Giver man? Why, sure. I strain all the fats and greases and put it into clean cans and take it down to Jeff the butcher and he buys it. You mean he actually pays money for that old stuff? <laughs> that Jeff must be out of his head. He ain't no sitchy. He sends it to the giver man because they want it. Ah, prattle, 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 prattle. Giver man don't want a batch of old grease laying around the White House. Bound you, Ms. Roosevelt has a hard enough job as it is keeping that big place clean. Special when she ain't home hardly none of the time. Well, just the same. They want old grease and fat. They're fighting the war with it. They get glycerol out in it. Glycerol? <laughs> For the land sake, such ignorance. That's glycerine, what it's called. Well, however you pronounce it. But I know they make gunpowder and dynamite and all sitchy stuff out in it. Now, you women don't know nothing about wars and dynamite and all sitchy that. Well, I know if us women folks don't save up grease to give them a run clean out of gunpowder, then we're liable to lose the war. Huh. 
I know it's that important. Mr. Jeff, the butcher said so, he said. Well, it might be important. Oh, 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 oh wait a minute, wait a minute. I found Jerry's grandpa right now. Here, take this dish to his bed. Don't let him see me with it. What's he coming at the back door for? I don't know. Go on, let him in. Don't forget now about his favorite rocking chair. Yeah. All right. Come in. Why, Lum Edwards, what are you doing here? <laughs> Yeah, howdy, Elizabeth. Oh, that dog is Lum. I thought you was Grandpa. No, no, it's just me. <laughs> oh. Ain't Grandpa got you yet? No, he ain't showed up. I thought sure he'd be in the parlor demonstrating a vacuum cleaner by now. That's why I snuck around to the back door this way. Demonstrating? Well, how can he demonstrate if he ain't actually got a vacuum cleaner? Well, he's got one now. Huh? He picked one up summer. He did? I don't know where he got it. He's getting himself all the way out, packing the thing around from house to house all over town. Well, how come him to tell him down there at Dick's store that he was a vacuum cleaner salesman anyway, Long? Uh, they's joshing him, Moe's Moose. Put oh. somebody up to it. <laughs> that sounds like it, Moe. Well, that never had no more business than believing. <laughs> For the land's sake. Is it a new one he's packing around with him? No, no, you can't hardly get new ones no more. This is just old second hand. Sounds like a lot of youngins get up to me. Well, it ain't no sillier than you saving up all that grease, Elizabeth. <laughs> Mom, that Elizabeth thinks a giver meant wants our old grease. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well, they do. Huh? Yeah, they need that stuff awful bad. Need it? Yeah, they're putting an awful lot of dependence in the women folks of our country to save every little bit of fat and grease they can. Vegetable fats and cooking oil and all that sort of thing. One's just as good as another. Yes, huh? Oh, it's one of the best ways in the world for them to help win the war. Well, I do know. Uh oh, uh oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe I heard the doorbell. Uh, that must be Grandpa. Now hurry up, Elizabeth. Uh, go on a corner and let him in. All right, all right, but I still say it's a heap of silliness. Yeah, long. Come on, let's mean you go in there and hide and watch Grandpa. Hide? Yeah, sure. Oh, I don't like to spy on folks, Sam. I hate to eavesdrop. But I would like to see if your house will bring back Grandpa's memory. Why, sure. That's the only reason I want to watch him. Uh, come on. Come on. Right in here, Lum. We can hide back of that sofa over there. He never will see you. <laughs> yeah, move over a little, Abner. Yeah, find out, find out. Be quiet now. Get down low. All right. Don't stand by wearing out the doorbell. Oh, howdy, madam. Howdy, 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 howdy. Davenport's the name. Buster V. Davenport of Toledo, Ohio. Uh huh. This is your lucky day, madam. No home ought to be without one of these up to the minute vacuum. Just cleaner. a second. Don't go dragging that contraption in here, Grandpa, for Mr. Davenport. Davenport. Buster V. Davenport of Toledo. Now, I don't want to take much of your time up, madam, but I just want to show you how this little marite here can help you do your housework in half the it'll time. It'll ruinate my carpet, that's what it'll do. No, no, it won't. It's guaranteed not to, madam. It'll clean up your rugs and curtains and chairs and everything else in no time at all. Here, let me demonstrate on that sofa there. No, I don't want that thing in the house. I told you that one. But, madam, you, you owe it to yourself. Beautiful woman like you oughtn't to have to work so hard. Beautiful. Yes, sir. That's exactly what I said. Beautiful. Are you married? Now, now listen here. Don't you go up proposing to me like you did to that Miss Millbank yesterday. <laughs> I heard about that. Oh, no, madam. No, my, I'm aiming on staying a bachelor the rest of my life. I just going to say, if you're married, does your husband talk again getting you a vacuum cleaner? Why, natural. That's just what I thought. Just what I figured. Madam, that husband of yours is a mean, ornery varmint. That's what he is. Now, just a minute here. Do you know why he's again vacuum cleaners? Because he don't want you to be happy and enjoy yourself. That's why. I've saw his kind before. He just wants you to be his slave. That's all. Keeps you working every minute of the time, don't he? Well, I will admit, i got more work around here to do than anyone here and can ever get did. Of course you have. Of course you have. And that low-down scheming man of yours fixed it that way on a purpose, too. Why, back there in Toledo, where I come from, fellas all buy the women folks vacuum cleaners. And then the women can get their work done in the morning and have every afternoon to sit around and eat chocolates and, and go to the movies and get their hair frizzed Wait up. a minute. You mean that fire machine will do all of that? Oh, sure. You'll have time to go roller skating, anything else you want to do. 
Uh, you can see now what that sneaking, penny-pinching husband of yours has been keeping from you. That low-down snake in the weeds, that ornery varmint. I, I hate to despise a man. Come in here. I've heard all this I can stand. Why, Mr. Peabody, where'd you come from? Well, never you mind where I come from. Grandpap, you pick that contraption up right now and tote both it and yourself out of here before I take a baseball bat. Abner, I... you just keep still. Mom. Just hash up and get out your pocketbook. Pocketbook? Yes, sir. You just bought me a vacuum cleaner. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. I dog is Lom, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. No. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, so far. Lum and Abner have been unsuccessful in their attempts to restore Grandpappy Spears and rid him of his amnesia. And so the old fellow goes blissfully on, thinking he's a vacuum cleaner salesman, Fredo. As we look in on the little community today, we find that Lum has gone to the county seat to try to straighten out the affairs of their almost non-existent rubber corporation, while Abner's in the Jotham Down store, and Grandpap is just entering. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Oh, well, morning, Grandpap. Or, I mean, Mr. Damport. Come on in. Come yeah, in. Much obliged. Dead coming anyway. Sometimes I wish I wasn't so old for and handsome. Handsome? Yep. Yep, being good looking is a nuisance, I believe. A downright flat footed nuisance. Now, what ever gave you the idea that you was good looking? Oh, just from the way all the women in this little burg's falling for me. Oh. It's a pigeon-toed nuisance, that's what it is. Them women are just trying to be nice to you, that's all. If it ain't one of them, it's another. In fact, it was, first it was that Millbank woman over at the boarding house. You was the one that proposed to her, weren't you? Well, in a way, I reckon, but I believe it was mostly her idea. Oh. Of course, I'll admit I never unencouraged her none. I might have made sheep eyes at her once or twice, I don't know. Yeah, that's just about what I figured. Of course, now, there ain't a bad-looking woman. No. I didn't mind that so much. I still don't know how that friend of yours, that Mr. Edwards, uh, don't see how he ever talked her out of marrying me. He must have made up some junk about me already being married or something like that. Well, natural, he told her that. I'll get even with that varmint someday, telling stories on me. Well, uh, what other women has fell for you so hard around here? Oh, dozens of them, dozens of them. Well, name them all. I'd like to hear who they are. <laughs> well, there, there was one I know. Oh, yeah, I recollect. Do you know a woman by the name of Charity Spears? Charity Spears? Hey, I went to her place this morning to sell a vacuum cleaner and... She wanted me to come right in the house, wanted me to sit down and eat some breakfast, and asked me when I was coming back to her and live there again. I don't know what else. She kept calling me Milford. Well, Milford's your name, that's why. Oh, no, my name's Buster V. Davenport of Toledo, Ohio. Are you sure about that? Well, to be honest, Mr. Peabody, I ain't exactly sure that's what it is. All I'm sure of is that my initials are BVD. Yeah. And prove that because them are the initials I found sewed in my underwear. I know my name ain't Milford, though. I know that. Wouldn't have such a name as that. He wouldn't have. Oh, law me say no. Well, do you want to know why Aunt Charity acted like she did towards you? I already know. It's because I'm good looking, because I have a certain natural easy charm. It ain't no such a thing. It's because Charity is your woman, that's why. My wife, say yes, sir. Yes. How could an unmarried bachelor like me have a wife? Is her name Miss Davenport? Why, of course it ain't. Well, she couldn't be no wife of mine then. Hmm. Besides, I ought to recognize my own wife. That is, if I had one or two. Well, whether you recognize her or not, that's who she is. Ah, pish posh. Piddle prattle. You know, if this sort of thing keeps up, I might just take my natural easy charm and go right back to my home in Toledo. Your home? Yes, sir. Oh. Now, exactly what does your home back there look like? Why, it's a... 
Well, it's uh, sort of a house, I believe. Why, natural. To be honest, Mr. Peabody, I sort of forgot just what it does look like. Yeah, I figured that. Seems like ever since I fell in front of your store and got that bump on my head, everything about my past has been sort of hazy. Can't seem to recollect much about it. Uh-huh. Well, now, tell me this, uh... What makes you think that you come from Toledo, Ohio? Oh, I know that to be a fact. Prove that by a card I found in my pocket. Card? What kind of card? Oh, just a little, huh? I found it in my pocket when I woke up after the accident. Well... Where else did I put that thing? Got it here somewhere, you know. Oh, here we are, right. My vest. Here, just take a look at that one. Yeah, yeah, let me see that thing. <laughs> This come out of a weighing machine. I don't care what it come out of. Just read what it says. Huh. Well, uh, weight 119 and a half pounds. That's me. I weigh too. You have a certain natural easy charm, uh, which will help you attain great success. The Toledo Scale Company. See there? I must have been in Toledo. I never could have got that card. Definite proof right there. Yeah, but Grandpa, or uh, Mr. Davenport, you might have got that card. Well, there comes your friend up out there. Huh? What's his name, Mr. Edwards, is it? Oh, sure, yeah, that's long. Yeah, he's been in the county seat this morning, went in there on some special business. All right, are you two fellas in business together here? Why, sure, you know that. Or, no, I don't reckon you do, no, no. That Edward seems like a nice fella. Of course, I never will forgive him for talking Miss Milbank out of marrying me. He had no rights to do that. Uh, I just... Well, howdy, Long. Uh, did you get to see that government fella? Yeah, I seen him all right. But it never done no good. Oh, howdy, Grandpap. Never, huh? I wish you fellas would stop calling me Grandpap. You'd think I was some old man to hear you talk. If you don't want to call me by Mr. Davenport, call me Buster. That's my give name. All right, Buster. Abner, I better have a talk with you private. Uh huh? Will you excuse us a minute, Mr. Davenport, while we go back in the feed room for a conference? Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I got to be leaving pretty soon, anyways. Got to get out and sell vacuum cleaners. Uh huh. Uh, you can read the almanac right over on the library table if you want to. Almanac? Yeah, there it is. Oh, I wouldn't read such trash as that. My time's too valuable to waste on rubbish like that stuff in the almanac. Don't be long. Do you hear that? All as before, you couldn't hardly pull him away from the almanac. Sat there all day long, read it out loud. Oh, he's a changed man, all right. He Ain't sure no is. about that. Yeah, yeah. Of course, in some ways, I believe this is an improvement over his old self, though. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Of course, I do hate to see his woman, Charity, so broke up over. She just warned herself to death. Yeah, that is a shame. I hate to see that myself. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, tell me what the government feller said. That Mr. Don, is that his name? Yeah, uh, well, uh, what I wanted to do was explain to him why we never sent him no samples of our synthetic rubber and yeah. tell him we'd send him some as soon as we could. Sure, sure. But the minute I told him Grandpap was the only one that knowed the formula and he got struck with amnesia, Mr. Dunn started laughing and Mike and I had me thrown out of his office. Thrown out of his office? Well, he got shut out of me awful quick, I know that. Oh. Said he was sick and tired of crackpots coming in there with harebrained ideas. Did he say that? Them was his exact words. Call me a crackpot. For the land's sake, you ain't cracked. So I reckon there goes our chance to ever get the government behind our synthetics rubber corporation. Yeah, well, with Grandpap out of his right mind, we ain't got no rubber corporation for the government to get behind on. No, that's right, we ain't. No. That means that business in Pine Ridge won't pick up, and so we'll lose the truck line. Yeah, yeah. I know that state transportation director ain't going to wait much longer for, before he decides to change the truck route over to Big Four. Yeah, well, what are we going to do, Long? Pennies, I don't know. I reckon maybe we'll just have to do like you said, try to bring Grandpap's memory back by hitting him on the head. Looks like it. I hate to do it, though. Yeah, me too. Reckon what we ought to hit him with, a sledgehammer? Well, I don't know. That might be overdoing it. I ain't sure. Don't well, want to kill him. No, we could just hit him easy. He wouldn't have to use all our strength. Just give him a couple of taps with him. Now, we better ask Doc Miller about that first, Abner. There's something else we got to worry about before we take that up anyway. Something else? Yeah, when I was at the county seat this morning, I was walking by that big second-hand store in there. That Eli Exchange Emporium? Yeah, old Jake's place. He's yeah. Runs it. Yeah, I know what He's thing. seen me and called me into his store. Well, I do. What do you want? Well, he recognized me as being from Pine Ridge, so he wanted to ask if I was acquainted with a fellow down here named Buster V. Davenport. 
Buster, oh, oh, what's Grandpap been up to now? Well, it seems he's ordered five second-hand vacuum cleaners from Jake. Five? Yeah, and Jake won't know if Mr. Davenport was good for him. Well, I hope you canceled the order right there. Well, it was too late. They'd already been sent to Penrith. Oh, my goodness. But I explained all about the amnesia and everything to Jake and told him that I'd see that he got them back. Yeah, yeah. The fact is, I've already taken that care of that. You have, huh? Yeah, I stopped over at Sister Simpson's boarding house. That's where he had them sent. And uh-huh. Sure enough, there they was already. <laughs> so I called the truck line and had them sent back. Well, good for you. Grandpap never could pay for them things. Of course he couldn't. He ain't got no money. And I know he'd never be able to sell them around here. First place, he ain't no salesman. Couldn't sell nothing. Well, of course, Elizabeth did buy that other than he had, but I reckon she'd done that just to be nice to him. More than likely. And I wish she'd never bought it neither long. Tell you, she gets up at 5 o'clock in the morning now and starts pushing that thing across the parlor of backwards and forward, backwards and forward. Oh, that'll drive a man stark raving mad crazy. It's doing it to me, I know that. But what I'm worried about is that Grandpap's going to keep on ordering stuff and get himself in so deep he's going to lose his house and everything else. Oh, that'd be a shame. After the way him and Charity's work so hard to get that place. Well, what we got to do is watch him every minute of the time, Abner. We'll have to guard Dean him just like he was a young. Yes, sir, that's just about what he is, too, a young. A helpless young. Oh, we better ask Doc Miller about that sledgehammer. Hey, Mr. Right Peabody. Oh. Mr. Peabody. I-, I hope he never heard us talking. Now, uh, what is it, Grandpa uh, Buster? Mind if I use your telephone? No, no, no. Go right ahead. Uh, wait a minute. You ain't fixing to call nobody at the county seat, are you? No, no. I just want to call over to boarding house. Oh, well, that's all right. Go right ahead. Uh... We better go in there and start. Yeah, what's their ring? Uh, two shorts and a long, Buster. Wonder how a baseball bat works on him anyway. Quiet, you can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Hello. This is Davenport, Buster V. Davenport of Toledo. Your new border. Yeah, listen, Miss Simpson, did did some vacuum some vacuum cleaners come there for me? Oh, well, he'll find out about it now. Sent back. Well, call up Jake Long Distance Firm and tell him to send them right back out here. Uh-oh. Yeah, tell him to send three more, too. Hey, now, wait a minute now, Grandpa. Don't worry, I'll pay for the call, but hurry up and do it. Goodbye. All right, Jimmy, how'd them things get sent back, Rick? Hey, now, listen, Buster, you don't need them vacuum cleaners. What do you mean, don't need them? I've already got vacuums all sold. Oh, so? Why, sure. Them five and three more. Huh? My pockets are stuffed full of money. I don't know what to do. Going to have to get some bigger pockets. I can see that. Hey, Granny, Zabner, I believe that's our ring. I don't get long. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. No. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, it looks as though no home in Pine Ridge will be without a second-hand vacuum cleaner if Grandpappy Spears doesn't recover his memory and cease thinking he's Buster V. Davenport, super salesman from Toledo. Meanwhile, Lum and Abner are desperately trying to devise means of curing Grandpap of his amnesia so that they can resume operations of their synthetic rubber corporation. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner just arriving at Cedric's house for the weekly meeting of the Golden Era Discussion Club. Good evening, Abner. Oh, well, hello, Lum. Right here, Cedric, you can take my hat and coat here. Yes, Mom, I'll come up. Hey, dog is Lum, you're sort of early tonight. I thought sure as the world I'd be the first in here. <laughs> well, I wanted to get here before Grandpap did. I got an idea I want to tell you about. Got an idea? Yeah, uh, Cedric, why don't you go out in the kitchen and see if your mama's getting her fresh mints fixed up all right? Well, I've already been out there, and she is. Oh, well, just go out in the kitchen, then. Yes, Mom. Yeah, go out there and tell your mom what she wants you, Cedric. Yes, Mom. Oh, what does she want with me? Well, how would I know? I ain't your mom. Well, that's right. What's the matter with me, anyway? <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, what's the idea now, Mom? Why, uh, wait a minute. Is Grandpa Masters asleep? Yeah, he is. I just wanted to be sure he's asleep. Here's the idea. I studied up a way to get Grandpappy Spears hit on the head and get shut of his amnesia. You have? And we won't have to do the hitting, either. Oh, my dog is, I'm proud to hear that. Tell you, I've been thinking about that, Mom, and I just don't believe I could ever bring myself around to taking a sledgehammer and whopping old Grandpap on the head with it. Well, you won't have to. Well, good. Yeah, I'd hate to do that myself. Why, sure. I feel awful sorrowful for him. Yeah, I do. Him and Charity both. Oh, she just worn herself to death over his condition. Just tells me she can't sleep at the night. Just worries all the time about it. One of the best friends in the world we ever had, and here he is, he don't even know us. No, 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 don't know nobody. Just can't recollect a thing since he got hit on the head. Besides that, he's the only one who knows that rubber formula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope we can bring his memory back soon, some way. Well, if this works, he'll be able to recollect the secret rubber formula, and we'll be back in the synthetic rubber business before this week's out. Well, well, uh, what's your idea? How are we going to do it? Well, you know how Cedric's paw always gets mad when there's too much noise in the house and stomps on the floor upstairs. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. Old Caleb's an early go the better. Hate to be disturbed. You recollect what happened last time we held a meeting here and Caleb got to stomping around. Yeah, there's something I don't reckon I'll ever forget. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I still got a big bump on my head where that black chandelier fell down and hit me. Just look at there. <laughs> well, that's a whole idea right there. That's exactly what's going to happen to Grandpap tonight. Oh, is that it? <laughs> I know you. That's a good <laughs> Yes, sir, that is a dandy. Good for you, Lom. Good for me for getting hit first and giving you the idea. <laughs> All we got to do is be extra noisy tonight so old Caleb will be sure and strong. Yeah, well, dog is all holler my head off. Yeah. He, you reckon me and Cedric ought to sort of sing a song? That'll make a lot more. Right? No, that'd be caring things too for her. Huh? I'd rather have Grandpap keep his amnesia than that. Oh. Uh, what chair does he most generally sit in? Grandpa? Yeah. Oh, any kind of a rocking chair. You know him. He loves rockers. If he's a rocker around any place, he won't let nobody else even get near it. They have a rocking chair sure. always. Yeah. Well, we'll just move this rocker right over here, direct under the chandelier, and, and then he'll sit down in it. Huh? <laughs> I, I tell you, that's a good idea. We'll fix him up. That's what... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That might be him now. Uh, Cedric, there's somebody at the front door. Wait a minute, I'll he... let him in. I want to be sure he gets in the right chair. Oh, he'll sit there. I know he will. Don't worry about that. Oh, hello there, Ulysses. Come on in. How's everything with you? Oh, okay, Lom, okay. I reckon you can just put your coat over there. Oh, okay. Evening, Ulysses. Come on in. Sit down. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. We're going to introduce a new member to the club tonight. His name's Buster V. Oh, Davenport. Ulysses, no, don't, don't sit there. Oh, don't for goodness there. sakes, no, Ulysses. That rocker's, well, it's being reserved for that new member I was just telling you about. Oh, well, okay, I'll sit over here then. Uh, who did you say the new member was, Lom? Buster V. Davenport. Buster V., why, that's Grandpappy Spears. He's no new member. No, Grandpappy ain't, no, but. Uh, now that he thinks he's Buster V. Davenport of Toledo, we got to take him into the club all over again. Yeah, see, he's heard about the club, and he insisted that we let him join. He claimed that it'd help him in his work around here. Yeah, he's got a crazy idea that he's a vacuum cleaner salesman now. Yeah, crazy idea is right. My woman, Carrie, bought one of those things from him this afternoon. She did? Yeah, bought it from him. <laughs> I believe that makes ten or eleven of them things he's so lorry. Well, the worst part about it with us is that we ain't got a single rug in the whole place over there. Hey, Zabner, we got to keep closer watch on Grandpa and see he don't get himself in no trouble. I don't know why his amnesia couldn't have made him think he's a barn painter. I've got to get that barn of mine painted. Oh, wait, wait a minute, there must be him now. Yeah. Let him in, Abner, and don't forget everything. Well, don't worry, I won't forget. Well, howdy, 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 howdy. Well, howdy, Grandpap, or Mr. Davenport. Hey, call me Buster if you like. We're friends, Lum. Lum? 
I ain't law, I'm Abner. Oh, excuse me. Well, howdy, everybody. Yeah, just go on and sit down. Or sit right there in that rocking chair there. Yeah, come right over here, Mr. Davenport. We're saving this special rocker for you. Yes, sir. New members always sits in that there first meeting. Yeah, yeah, new members always does that, yeah. Yeah, if that's the case, I'll sit there then. <laughs> Most generally, though, I can't stand to sit in rockers. Ha. Huh. Always hate them back in Toledo. Oh, how do you do, sir? Don't believe I've made your acquaintance before. Why, you know me. I'm Ulysses S. Quincy. Quincy, Quincy. Oh, yeah, soldier, little woman, a cleaner today. Uh, Davenport's my name, Buster V. Davenport of Toledo, Ohio. Say, I think I'll sit somewhere else. This chair ain't very comfortable. Uh, no, 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 Grandpa, uh, Buster, you have to sit there. you got to do it. Hand him that pillar off the sofa there, Abner. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Just a minute, get you this pillar there. Yeah. Here, Buster. Now, I'll put this behind your back there. Yeah. That's better now, ain't it? Yeah, maybe. All right, start up your meeting. Yeah. Uh, Cedric, you can come in out of the kitchen now. The meeting's going to start. Hurry up. Yes, Mom, I'm coming. Everybody here yet? Yeah, yeah, everybody's here. Just sit down, Cedric, and pay attention. Yeah, all right, Mom, go ahead. Yeah, all right. The tenth meeting of the Golden Era Discussion Club will now come to order for its tenth meeting. In view of the circumstances over which we have a new member with us tonight, I'd like to repeat that the object of this club is to try to get a higher type of ignorance in Pine Ridge. Now, before uh, taking... Uh, don't subject, you think you ought to talk louder? Uh, we want all the members to hear everything good and loud, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I, I forgot. Uh, before taking up the high class cause your subject... Louder, Mom. Um, Talks aloud. Papa will get mad and start stomping again. What'd you say, Cedric? I said Papa will get mad. Oh, wait a minute. What am I hollering for? Uh-huh. Oh, oh, there he goes. Excuse me. I'll be right back. Yeah, wait a minute, Cedric. Don't go now. Oh, so Papa will just keep on stomping if I don't. Well, that's all right. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, uh, I think you go back to sleep. Uh, sit down, Cedric. We'll try to be more quiet, I think. Yeah, we'll be more quiet. Be awful quiet. Won't make a sound, Cedric. You just sit down. Well, I'll better go upstairs and see him. If I don't, he'll stop clean through that ceiling. No, no, sit down now, Cedric. Oh, is that thing's fastened up far better than it was the last time, Long. Yeah, well, I reckon what's wrong with it. I don't know. Hey, I believe I'll set somewhere else after all. This pigeon-toed rocker ain't comfort. No, 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 now, don't get up, Grandpa. Sit right there now. Get him another pillar off the sofa there. Uh, Oh, all right. Yeah, this one here looks like a nice sofa. Here, here, try this one, Buster. Yeah, raise up a minute. Yeah, I'll put that right there. You'll enjoy that. Just like sleeping on a feather bed. Yeah, is that more comfort now? Well, I don't know. I'll try it. Don't much like it, though. Always hated and despised rockers back in Toledo. All right, Lom, go on with the meeting now. Uh, before taking up the high-class culture subject oh, for tonight. Oh, they cut down the old pine tree. Now, please go upstairs and hold it, it away. No, Cedric, just sit down. So, just what's the matter with that thing? Cedric, you ain't had no uh, repairing done in the house, have you? Mom? Oh, uh, for answer, then, some uh, electric repair. I don't know. Like, say, a chandelier or something like that. All right, Jiminy, I can't stand to sit in this rocker another minute. Just ain't comfort. That's all they are. Now, Buster, you sit back down there now. But that dumb thing keeps rocking. I don't like that. Give me a good, steady, flat-footed chair any day. Now, back in now, the... Now, listen here, there. Buster. We ain't going to argue Wait a minute. i got to argue. Abner, move the rocker away, and I'll put my chair there and let him sit in there. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Get up, Buster. All right, Jiminy. Back in Toledo, I always sit in a good, steady, flat-footed chair. Not one of them blasted, pigeon-toed rockers. Well, I'll don't think. get mad about it. Back in Toledo, I always sit oh, in Oh, my... Uh, Lom! Lom! Watch out, Lom! My goodness. Doggy, that chandelier knocked him out cold. Cedric, get some water or a wet cloth, quick. Yes, Mama, a wet cloth? Uh, what color? It don't make no difference. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe he's coming too. Long, long. Oh, me. Oh, what happened? Oh, my. Where am I? Well, you're right here with me, Long, with Abner. Here. With Abner? Who's he? Why, Abner, I'm your partner, Long. Never seen you before in all my life. Huh? Oh, my goodness, now Long's got the air and easy, too. Hey, 
Granny said, I believe that's our ring. I don't get long, I believe you're right. Now, see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lumen Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum's plan to restore Grandpap's memory by letting a chandelier fall on his head didn't turn out so well. The chandelier landed on Lum's head by mistake, and the last we saw of him, he wasn't quite sure who he was either. Grandpap, however, came through the evening uninjured and continues to think he's Buster B. Davenport, salesman from Toledo. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Downs Torn Library applying first aid to Lum's injured head. Listen. Oh, oh, easy there, Abner. Don't make them hot packs a dead gum hot. That's what both Elizabeth and Doc Miller said to put on your head to take the swelling down, Lum. They said make them hot, but they never said to scold me to death. Well, I don't care whether I'm scalding you or not, but I believe that lump's going down some. I know that. I don't feel like it. Why, it is, too. It ain't much bigger than a hen egg right now. Feels like a watermelon sitting up there. Oh, well, it ain't half that big. Oh, Granny's still hurts. Yeah, yeah. I don't know whether the bump hurts or where you scalded me. Now, Lum, I ain't hurting you. You're just fussy. That's your trouble. So he's worse than some young in the way he is. that chandelier over at Cedric's place is heavier than I ever figured it was. Well, it sure knocked you out in a hurry when it fell on you, I'll say that for it. Facts is, when you finally come to and then hardly know me, why, I thought sure as a world that you'd got the amnesia, too. <laughs> well, I almost wished I had. Huh? Wouldn't hurt as much as this bump on my head, I don't think. Well, that was sure cute, the way we had Grandpap sitting under that chandelier all evening, and no matter how hard old Caleb stomped on the floor upstairs, it wouldn't come down. But the minute you got under there, bang, it come right down. <laughs> That was sure funny. <laughs> I don't see nothing funny about it. Answer the phone. That was our ring, I think. Huh? Oh, I never paid no attention. I'll get it. I'll get it. Old Caleb wants us to pay for the chandelier, he says, too long. Pay for it? Hey, hello, John. I'm down store in library, Abner. Peabody doing the talking. I'm charging for this bump on my head. Oh, yeah, he's here, Dick, but I don't believe he feels much like coming to the phone. Oh, he's got a little bump on his head. Little? Grannies, might not have got a concussion of the skull. Well, for the land sakes, where'd you hear that? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'll tell him, yes, sir. Yeah, well, much obliged, Dick. Yeah, goodbye. Huh. What's the trouble now? Why, Dick Huddleston found out from some friend of his that they're going to decide it in two or three days, huh? Who's going to decide what? Oh, why, that their state transportation department, or whatever it is, they're having a meeting to decide about the truck line. Going to say whether we get to keep it or whether they're going to enroute it through Big Four. Oh, my goodness. Sort of looks like the end of Pine Ridge, don't it? Well, Granny, we just can't let that happen, though, Abner. we got to do something. That's all they are to it. Well, what can we do, Long? Well, it looks like we'll just have to bring back Grandpap's memory by whopping him on top of the head whether we can stand to do it or not. I don't believe I could ever get up north enough to do that, Long. Well, me neither, but we can't just let Pine Ridge die right in front of our faces. No, Orton, too, no. we got to get our Synthetics Rubber Corporation started up. That's what we got to do. And the only way we can do that is to get Grandpap to recollect the secret formula. Yeah, but ain't it too late for that to do any good, Lum? There's only two or three days left before they decide this thing. I know, but we can at least get the corporation started, and then I'll go direct to the state transportation outfit and show them how we be trucking synthetics rubber out of here day and night. Yeah, that's a good idea. That ought to help them decide to leave us have the truck line. Yeah, well, we can at least try. I don't know whereabouts we can find Grandpap at, though. He's out somewhere selling ice boxes. No telling where he's at. Ice boxes? Yeah. You mean vacuum cleaners, don't you? Oh, no. He started to sell secondhand ice boxes now, too. For goodness sakes. What won't he study up next? Here he laid around here for years and never turned a hand to help his woman make a living. And now then, since he's got the amnesia, he must think he's a businessman. Oh, he does. Works night and day. He's a gore since he got that amnesia. Sell anything that ain't nailed down. Oh, yeah. And he sells it, too. He sure does. Granny, I was just thinking here. 
Reckon me and you could mix up some rubber. Huh? You was with Grandbab when he made that first batch of it, wasn't you? Well, I was back there in the feed room with him, but I don't know exactly what all he put in it long. Grandpap's the only one that knows that. Hmm. Granny's would have to be him that had amnesia. Yeah, and he's the only one that knows the formula. You wouldn't let him tell it to me or you. Of all people. Yeah. Well, all the stuff he used is still in the feed room, ain't it? Yeah, it's still there. He got everything out of that junior misto chemistry set he bought. Well, that is everything set the uh, stretch bears, of course. Have we got any of them? Yeah, there's still some of them out there, too. Cedric brought in a whole batch of them that day at Grand Fat Phil and lost his memory. They're still back there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Granny, come on, we're going back in the feed room and try to make some synthetics rubber. Uh -huh. Right now. You got the stove going already, ain't you? Well, yeah, I let it to heat the water for them hot packs for your head, Lon. Doggy, that reminds me, I better put another on. No, 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 there. forget the hot packs. Well, now, Lon, I'm, you need them. I'm done now, I think. Huh? This is a heap more importance than my head anyway. Come on, let's get going. Well, now, Lom, I don't think we can recollect that secret formula. Maybe not, but we can try. We might stumble onto it accidentally. Hurry up, Abner. Well, I'm coming, I'm coming. I don't know why we can't study up how to make rubber as well as Grandpap can, or could. We're as smart as he is, I know. At least ways one of us is. Which one of us do you mean? I don't like to mention my own name. Huh? Uh, set a biler on the stove while I get out that misto chemistry set here. Oh, yeah, I'll get that. I wish I know who he's talking about. Yeah, hurry up, Abner. We ain't got a minute to lose here. Hey, this is quite an outfit here, this chemistry set. Oh, yeah, Grandpap was awful proud of that. Did he use any of this stuff in these little bottles and tubes here? Yeah, I believe he did. You don't recollect which one, though? So. Oh, I couldn't tell you to save me, Lom. He was the one that done all that. Let's see now. Abner, try to recollect exactly what Grandpap done first. Did he pick up some of these bottles first or what? Oh, Lord, I forget now. Long facts is, I don't think I was paying much attention to it. Well, think hard now. Concentrate. Concentrate. Put your hand up to your forehead like I always do when I'm studying. Sort of squint up your eyes. Look like this, like an ending looking for something. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I'll try it. What can you recollect now? Nothing. I was feared of that. All I know is that Grandpap started out to make invisible ink. Invisible ink? Yeah, I mean, him was going into the invisible ink business, but Cedric come along whilst we was cooking the ink and throwed some stretch bears into the boiler by mistake, and, well, first thing we know, we had a batch of rubber. Hey, Granny, that's all we need to know. Huh? It tells here how to make invisible ink and the directions that come with the misto set. Yeah, but we don't want to start making ink again, do we? Of course not, but that's the way to commence mixing up the rubber. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're as good as back in the rubber business right now. Well, good for... Uh, er, wait a minute, Long. What's the matter? Grandpap never followed the directions. He never? No, he claimed they was all wrong, so he studied up his own farm. Uh, who's that somebody in the store there? Oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I believe we do hear somebody walking in there. Yeah, howdy, 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 howdy. Oh, well, howdy, Grandpa, or Mr. Davenport. Never heard you come in there. Yes, sir, yes, sir. How's everybody here today? Can you interest you fellas in a nice second-hand sewing machine? Sewing machine? You selling them now, too? Just name it, and Buster V. Davenport will get it for you. <laughs> How about a second-hand ice cream freezer? Oh, no, we don't want no ice cream freezer, so... Well, what's that you got there, Mr. Edwards? A chemistry set? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, looks sort of familiar somehow. Let me look at it. Oh, sure, go ahead. Did you hear that, Long? Yeah, I encourage him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whereabouts do you think you saw a set like that before, Grandpa, or Mr. Davenport? Oh, I don't know. More than likely had one like it when I was a boy back in Toledo. You sure you never had one like that here in Pine Ridge? Oh, no, of course not. Them's for youngins. Let's see, what was it I used to mix up with one of them sets? What was that now? It wasn't a uh, synthetic rubber, was it? I can't quite recollect what it was. It, it weren't your own formula for invisible ink, was it? Ink? Yeah, yeah. By Jimmy, that reminds me. Uh -huh. of <laughs> Say, can I use that biler you got on the stove there? Why, sure. Go right ahead. Yeah. Is there some water handy? Yeah, yeah, there's some in the biler there right now. And uh, there's some stretch bears in that bucket over there. Uh, that is, just in case you want some stretch bears. Oh, uh, Abner, let's me and you go in the other room. Huh. In the store. Oh, oh. There's some work we got to do or something. Yeah, yeah, sure. You yeah. go right ahead and do whatever you're going to do, Mr. Davenport. Yeah.
just make yourself at home, Mr. Davenport. Mix up anything. Yeah, much like. obliged, fellas. I appreciate this. Not at all. I know. Mom, you reckon he'll sure enough start mixing up that secret formula? I don't know. It sure looked like things were starting to come back to him yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Leastways, I figured it was best to leave him alone and not bother him. Did, did you notice he'd taken off his coat and his shirt just like he always done before he was mixing up that chemistry stuff? Oh, I'm might not sure this is going to do the trick. His memory's coming back to him, George. Sure, sure the word. I yeah. hope so, yeah. Oh, this will bring it back if anything does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, this is the last thing we, he was thinking about before he got amnesia. Yeah. Do you recollect he was coming over here to mix up rubber the morning he fell down and yeah. bumped his head? That's right, that's right, yeah. And he, he might get shut of his amnesia and save Pine Ridge all in one lick. I wished he would. You know, I've been sort of worried about old Grandpa. This word that they Yeah, me about. too. Poor old fella running around here not knowing who he actually is or nothing uh-huh. else. He's really a sick man and don't know it. And he won't let Doc Miller do nothing for him because he claims there ain't nothing wrong with him. Well, when you come right down to it, I guess he ain't suffering none. Well, no. Facts is, he seems spryer than he used to be. And I believe he's happier, too, huh? Yeah, but he don't seem the same. He ain't the old grandpa. No. Seems almost like we've lost an old friend. Yeah, here, we've known him for like nigh 30 years. Wait a minute, Mike, I'll find out. Here he comes, don't see Hey, Abner! I know, because he called me Abner. Uh, did you get the rubber mixed up? Hey, rubber? Yeah. I don't know how to mix up no rubber. Uh, I was just washing out my shirt in that boiler back there. Your shirt? Yeah, that pigeon-toed fountain pen of mine leaked ink all over it. Whereabouts can I hang it up to dry? I believe that's our ring. I don't get long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Roman Abner. Hello. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, nothing seems to bring back Grandpappy Spears' memory. And so he is still unable to recall the secret formula for synthetic rubber. And without that, Lum and Abner are unable to manufacture and transport rubber. And without this increase in trucking business, Pine Ridge bids fair to lose its very important truck line. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store. Lum is just entering. Get hold of Grandpa. Well, morning, Lom. Oh, morning. Get hold of Grandpa and get him over here right away. Huh? I got an idea how to get his memory back. We huh? gotta work fast, or it'll be too late to do any good. Huh? I was just talking to Dick Huddleston, and he said that state transportation committee has set its meeting for Monday morning. Monday morning? Yes, sir. That's when they're gonna decide whether to stop the Pine Ridge truck line or not. Oh, my goodness. And that don't give us hardly no time at all to get Grandpa to recollect that secret rubber formula so we can start trucking rubber out of here. No, that ain't much time to do all that. Well, what's your idea about getting shot of Grandpa's amnesia? Well, better get a hold of him first, and then I'll tell you. Oh, oh. Try over at Sister Simpson's boarding house. He might not have left yet this morning. Yeah, well, I'll try, but he gets out pretty early in the morning now since he's taking up selling all that second-hand junk. Sewing machines, ice boxes, washing machines, carpet sweepers, ice cream. Hello? Uh, Miss Simpson? Huh. Well, this is Abner Peabody. Oh, tolerably, I reckon. Uh, I'm visiting with her and ask about well, her. Well, I'm answer. trying to get to it. Mom? Yes, Mom, what I called about is, is Grandpappy there? It's an hour to see. Well, I mean Buster V. Davenport, Yeah. Well, no, don't call him to the phone. Uh, just tell him to come over to the store just as quick as he can. Tell him it's important. Yeah, yes, Mom, it's awful important, Slum says. All right, much obliged, Miss Sampson. <laughs> uh, goodbye. He was still there, huh? Just going out the door, but she said she could catch him. Well, good. Uh, now, tell me what it is we're going to do, Mom. Uh, take a baseball bat and whop him with it? No, I talked to Doc Miller about that, Abner, and he says we're liable to do anything. Fun than good by hitting him on the head. Oh. Might hit him too hard and knock all the brains he's got out of his head. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah, Doc advised against that. 
Well, to tell you the truth, I'm glad he did, Lump. That's been bothering me something wonderful. Yeah, well, I know it's here. says I even dreamed that I was hitting Grandpap last night. Just been studying about it so much, I guess. I pulled a telephone pole right out of the ground and started banging him on the head like I was trying to beat out a fire. Oh, for <laughs> well, my uh, idea was to... It didn't seem exactly like it was Grandpap I was hitting. It seemed more like you. Er, Cedric, one of them. You know how it is in dreams. Yeah, well, it don't make no difference about it. Here's what I... It weren't exactly me that was doing the hitting either. It was, seemed like it was more like his woman, Aunt Charity. And it was me she was flopping. And old grandpap was sitting up on top of a streetcar just dying of laughing. A streetcar? Yeah, well, uh, sort of. It wasn't exactly a streetcar. Seems like it was more like an elephant, I believe. Yeah, an elephant with one short leg, and he had a hard time balancing himself, and old grandpap just sat up there and laughed. Only he never had his teeth in. See, he loaned them to the elephant because uh, the elephant wanted to eat some taffy candy. Yes, well. That weren't no dream. That's a nightmare you had. I ain't interested in your idiotic dreams no way. Huh? We got something way under more important to worry about than that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Now, my idea oh, is to get... I ain't had no taffy candy for years and years. I always love that stuff, too. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's what I we're going to... Where about that elephant got that taffy he was... Oh, for goodness sakes, Abner, forget that dream let me tell you how we're going to try to help Grandpap recollect who he is. Oh, yeah, yeah, Grandpap. Uh, uh, what are we going to do to him? Well, you're going to get him into a checker game. Checker game? Yeah. Doc Miller told me about a case where a fellow always got stark raving mad when he seen his woman's petticoat showing a little. Just couldn't stand it. Hmm. Well, this fella got amnesia. And one day he's walking down the street and he seen a woman walking ahead of him with her petticoat showing he got mad and started scolding her like he used to do his own woman, and right whilst he was doing that, his memory come back to him, and he got short of his amnesia. Well, I do know. <laughs> Doc says that works in lots of cases, too. Something emotional like getting awful mad will make them recollect through the air. Getting mad, huh? Yeah, so that's what you're going to do to Grandpap. Well, now, just a minute here. I ain't going to put on no petticoat. I can tell you that right here and now, Lon. I never said you'd have to do that. I said you was going to play checkers. In a petticoat? No, well, just in your regular clothes. Oh. The idea is that you're supposed to get Grandpap mad. Oh. And you know there ain't no one thing that makes him matter to have you cheat at checkers. Lon, I don't cheat. Well, all I know is that Grandpap's always accused me of it. And then he gets mad. Right now he goes into a transom and gets the apoplexy. Oh, Lord, yes, he accuses me of it, sure. I can't make a move before he don't accuse me of cheating. There's a specious this one feller I ever played checkers with in my life. Yeah, well, today when you play with him, I want you to cheat all you can. Oh, well, that might be sort of hard for a feller like me that don't know how to cheat to do that long. But maybe I might be able to study up some little way. I don't know. Yeah, I think you might. I'll try. I ain't much worried about that. Huh. The point is to let Grandpap see you do it. Oh. Uh. Get that old fella just as mad as you can. Get him so he can't even see straight. Well, do you sure enough think that'll bring back his memory long? Well, it might. If you can get him mad enough, it will. Well, huh. And I know you can do that. I saw him mad enough to bite. Yeah, I and can get him mad. I know that. Yeah. Mad is a wet setting in. Oh, this gets first. Yeah. I can't recollect a single game of checkers you two fellas ever played in your whole lives when Grandpap didn't get sore and start fighting. Now, I sure come to think about it, I don't believe I can. Oh, I walked that. in this store and seen him picking up chairs and tables and everything else going to walk you with. He'll throw anything when he gets mad. Anything yeah. that ain't nailed down. Yes, he will. Awful, bad-humored fella. Well, you'll have to watch him today. Don't let him throw nothing at you. Well, I'd hate for you to get hit on the head and get the ammunition. Oh, I ain't going to let him hit me. Don't worry about that. I won't get him at me. Oh, well, I think this thing will work all right. Well, I'll good. get the checkerboard out for you. Have everything ready for him when he gets here. Yeah, that's a good idea. Say, Lom, he couldn't have just bought that himself, could he? Huh? Who couldn't have bought what? That elephant, he couldn't have just went in the store and bought that taffy candy. Oh, for goodness sake. He's too big to get inside of a store. Where was them checkers at? They're right over there behind the counter there. Oh. And even if he did get in the store, he wouldn't have no money. And if he had money, he wouldn't be able to walk up and say, Well, how'd he do, sir? I'd like ten cents worth of taffy. Elephants don't want What are you talking about? Huh? 
that dream of mine. Oh, for goodness sakes, forget about that. More dream. likely some young and just giving that taffy about what happened. Might have run out of peanuts and all they had left was taffy and they Listen give now. it to them. Oh, oh, wait a minute. There comes uh, Grandpap out there. Uh, oh, don't forget oh. now. Get him madder in a wet hey, Don't worry. I know how to do that. Well, howdy, 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 howdy. Well, howdy, Grandpa, uh, Mr. Davenport. Yeah, how's everybody today? How's Miss Peabody, Lom? Uh, you got that wrong, Buster. I'm Miss Peabody. Or, I mean, I'm her wife. All uh, right. She's my... I'm Abner, you know. Oh, excuse me. I keep getting you fellas mixed up. <laughs> Sister Simpson tells me you wanted to see me. Yeah, we uh, did want you to come over. We, yeah, uh, we heard you's quite a checker player, Buster, so we... Thought you might like to have a game with Abner here. He plays a little. Yeah, a little bit once in Checkers, a while. huh? Checkers. Law sakes, I ain't played that in years. Oh. Used to monkey around with the game back in Toledo. Around the far station there. Never played steady, though. Awful rusty now. Oh, well. When it comes to that, I ain't much good at it myself. I don't think. Uh, come on, sit down here at the table now. The checkers all set, set right away. Oh, yeah, see, they're already here. Yeah, yeah. Then I might have a game or two. <laughs> Just short ones, though. Uh-huh. Or to be out uh, selling. Selling stuff. Got a deal on for a second-hand pine. Oh, well, this won't take long. Yeah, that's it right there. They sit right down. Yeah, all right. Uh, whose first move is it? You go ahead and be first, Abner. Me? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, let's see. I believe I'll move that one right there. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I believe I'll start out this way. All right. I'll just move that one right there, I believe. All right. And, uh, wait a minute. How'd you get a man up there already? Well, I just moved him up for natural. Well, can you do that, though? Why, sure. You can, huh? Of course you can. Oh, <laughs> I thought for a minute you was cheating. <laughs> Well, yeah, let's see. My move, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. a minute. Buster, I hate to say this, but I think Abner did cheat there. <laughs> oh, no, he never. Peabody wouldn't do a thing like that. Not a nice fella like him. All right. There's my move. Go ahead. Well, let's see. Oh, all right. I'll move right there. Yeah. Fine, fine. Let's see, I order study up a good in here now. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second, Buster. Didn't you see what Abner done there? You ain't gonna let him get away with that, are you? I never done nothing wrong. Of course he never. Leave him alone, Lum. He's doing all right. Let me see. Leave I'll move right there. Yeah. Go ahead, Abner. All right, I'll move right there. That one right there. Fine, fine. <laughs> My granny's grandpa, her buster. Look there, he can't do that. Why can't he? Every man to his own system, I ought to say. Maybe he's playing by the new rules for all we know. Let's see here now. New rules? Oh, uh, what new rules? There ain't no rules that says he can move a man like he done that last in there. Well, maybe he just made a mistake. Your move, Abner. I never made no mistake, neither. Well, maybe he just wasn't looking. Or maybe you don't know how to play very good. I don't know. It don't matter none. Go ahead and move. Wait just a minute. You said I don't know how to play very good. Abner said that. I told you nobody ain't going to say that about Abner, me, Long. Simmer down. Nobody can say that about me. I've been playing checkers for 40 years, and I told you I can beat any man, woman, or child in Pine Ridge with both hands tied behind my back, one eye closed, a thousand pound weight sitting on my head. Abner, come back here and finish this game. I ain't going to do no such thing. I ain't going to sent across from no feller says I don't know how to play checkers. Wouldn't even stay in the same room with a barnet like that low down snake. Abner, Abner. Well, if that don't beat the bugs of fight. Cute your feller that, Abner. Of course I don't reckon he can help it. More likely his mom and papa's to blame. To blame? To blame for what? Well, I hate to say this. But there's the cheatness one feller I ever run up again my whole life. But he can't get mad at him because he can't help. Hey, Granny, Zabner, I believe that's our ring. I dog is long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Love and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, today is the zero hour in the affairs of Pine Ridge. 
For this is the day that the Straight Transportation Committee is meeting to decide if Pine Ridge will keep its truck line or if it will be discontinued and rerouted through Big Fork. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jot em down store and library awaiting the outcome of this vital meeting. Listen. Yeah, well, I just thought maybe you'd heard something by now, Dick. Yeah. Well, sorry to keep bothering you, but I reckon you know how I feel. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, let us know, Dick. All right, goodbye. No news yet, huh? No, nothing yet. Well, Lom, how's Dick going to find out so quick what that transportation committee decides about that truck line? How's he going to do Well, that? he's got this friend of his that works up there at the state capitol. Forget just what he does. Oh. Works in there somewhere. Uh-huh. He's going to telegraph Dick just as soon as the committee makes up his mind. Well, I wish they'd hurry up and do it. This waiting around here is awful. Yeah, if we're going to lose a truck line, I wish we'd lose it and get it over with. You reckon Pine Ridge could get along without that thing, Lum? I don't know. we are all come to put a lot of dependence on them trucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Carry all the farmer's produce to the market and... Bring us businessmen or our merchandise. Yeah, yeah, we use it all the time. That's about the most important connection we got with the outside world. I got that from Dick, that last thing. Yeah, well, I reckon he's right about it, yeah. Yeah, with all this gas racing and tires so hard to get to farmers, or nobody can do their own trucking. No, no. And with folks moving over to Big Fork, business here is going to get worse and worse. Doggy Drum, you make this sound like the end of the world's coming. It's the end of Pine Ridge, I reckon. That's sort of our world. Well, you reckon there's any chance that that committee might decide to just keep the truck line running through here? No, I'm fear not, Adam. Especially not after the way I filled out that questionnaire. Oh, yeah. That and where you wrote no to all them questions, huh? Yeah. I figured that'd be the safest thing to do, but it turned out to be the worst thing a body could have did. Yeah. Well, when the committee reads that, why... Well, well, they more likely say dog is this town of Pine Ridge don't do no business at all, won't they? Yeah, or to be horsewhipped and tarred and feathered for doing that. I was just too proud to ask anybody any questions. Down to determined to fill it out myself. Huh. Yeah, I'm a good mind to get some tar and feather myself. Well, there's a barrel of tar back there in the feed room, Ron. And then Elizabeth generally's got a lot of chicken feathers kicking around the place over there. Huh. You want me to call her up and see if she can gather you up a batch of them feathers? No, I wouldn't want to put her to no trouble. Oh, here ain't no trouble. She's got them right there. Well, I think them's the wrong kind of feathers anyway. Oh. Granny, if we could just got our rubber corporation started, that would have turned the trick first. But what kind of feathers are you supposed to have on? I don't know, Abner. Oh. We could have been trucking tons and tons of rubber out of Pine Ridge right now if old Grandpap hadn't have bounced his head on the ice and forgot the secret formula. Yeah, he got that amethyst right at the wrong time. He ought to have known better than that. Just like him to do something like that. Well, he never got amnesia on a purpose. Oh. But it does seem a shame that here's a fellow that could save our town. Instead of that, he's going around thinking he's Buster V. Davenport and wasting all his time trying to sell a bunch of worthless junk that nobody wants. Well, he's selling it too long. Yeah, it's a trouble. Pioneers, ice boxes, I don't know what all ain't. A day passes that a whole load of that stuff will come out here from the county oh, seat. Yeah. He's more likely got old Jake's second-hand store at the county seat there bought clean out by this time. More than likely. And there ain't nothing we can do about it, either, looks like. Well, we've tried not now every way there is to get his memory back. Nothing's worked so far. I mean, how do you feel about moving to Big Fork? Moving to Big Fork? Yeah, yesterday on the way home from church, I run into Squire Skimp, and he said he had an option on a store building over there and said we could rent it from him. Oh. Uh, Maybe buy it later on. You mean just move the John down store over there to Big Fork? Well, yeah, that's about what it amounts to. Uh, well, me, I don't know what to say, Lom. I ain't thought much about it before. We ought to do right well over there, being on the new truck line and all. Yeah. That's where it'll run after the committee gets done rerouting it today. Yeah, well, doggies, I don't know. Before you answer, let me tell you how I feel. 
Now, you're a married man, Abner, and you got a family to support. Yeah. Of course, little Pearl more than likely be able to take care of herself the time she graduates from that nursery school. But or, you got to think about your woman, Elizabeth, too. Yeah, well, I do. I'll back all of it. So, I've been studying about it. I, I believe we ought to move. I'm for it, I think. Oh, oh good Lom, I don't know whether I could bring myself to leave Pine Ridge or not. I, I just don't believe I could ever do it. Well, what if we go broke sitting here, though? Well, I don't care what happens. I, I just don't believe I could get myself to leave. The fact is, I know I couldn't. You couldn't, huh? No, sir, I And I agree, he's having her put her there. Huh? That's just exactly the way I feel about it. Just exactly. Can't Of course it is. <laughs> now, I didn't say it before because I never want to stand in your way, but I couldn't leave here neither. No. Be just like running away from an old friend and leaving him to die all by himself. Just about. Yeah, just what it'd be like. We'll be able to keep going here somehow. I Why, know we sure. can. Well, Elizabeth can always raise enough stuff in that garden of hers to keep us from starving. Right? Why, sure. Fact is, me and you might even help her with the garden. Help her? Do a woman's work? Make it twice as big as it is now. Maybe even three, three times as big. Well, I don't know, Lum. Elizabeth don't like nobody else interfering with that garden of hers. She's always afraid somebody else will run it. Just don't like well, it. Well, we'll figure out something. Pine Ridge has meant too much to us to run out on her now. We've spent the best years of our lives here. Sure. Now, if it's going to dry up and blow away, I grant is we'll blow away with it. Well, I know you never could get Elizabeth to move away long. Of course, she's all the same how she wants to go down to Texas and spend a couple of months with her brother Fred and all that, but she won't be down there two days till she starts studying up a thousand or a hundred reasons why she ought to get back home here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it'll take me, for instance. You know, all them big ideas I've always had about going to New York and San Francisco and all them big places. Yeah, you would always want to be a big executive somewhere there. <laughs> yeah, but I know now that if I had my life to live over, I'd live every speck of it right here in Pine Ridge. You would, huh? Wouldn't trade my life here with nobody. Not even Rocky Feller? No, sir, not with nobody. Huh. Lots of things we don't have here that they have in the big cities. We don't have a lot of big cars to race around in. No. No fancy gadgets to do our work for us. We, I reckon we got some that they ain't got, though. We got time to get acquainted with our neighbors, I Oh, know yeah, we get acquainted all right. Natural, no one. Living right here. Yeah, and you see a youngin' on the street here. He ain't just a youngin'. He's some old friend of yours growing up all over again. Growing up? We just take any youngin' in town. He's... Nearly always a spitting image of his papa and acts just like him. <laughs> well, like that little Tom Forster. Now, he talks out of the side of his mouth just exactly like old Tom does, just exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chews tobacco, too. Just yeah, like that. reminds me of Tom when he's a boy. Looks just like him. On my way to the store this morning, I was studying about this. Pretty soon I noticed nearly everything I've seen. Well, every tree, every rock, uh, that watering trough in front of Dick Huddleston's store where it broke windows, Luke Spears' restaurant. No matter what I looked at, it brought back some memory to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, don't just all of a sudden get up and walk away from things like that. Well, these ways, not when he's an old fella like me and you, Long. No. Well, you're getting a little old, I reckon. Ha. Huh. No, our, our roots has grown pretty deep into the soil around here, Abner. I don't believe we could ever be transplanted. Well, no, when you... Uh, we belong here. Oh, yeah. Just like them hills that's around Pine Ridge here. Seems sort of like we... We run the town during the day, and them hills sort of look after things first during the night. <laughs> We ain't got no more right to leave here than them hills has. Well, I know they ain't going to leave long. The hills can't go nowhere. Or at least, well, I don't think they can. We don't even need a clock to tell the time of day around here no more. Just look out the front window there, and if you see Moe's Moose leaving the barbershop to go to lunch over to the restaurant, well, you know, it's exactly 11.45. Oh, yeah, he Right on the head. No, not two seconds, one way or the other. No, sir. And when you see Ezra Seast drunk going to the post office to get his mail, you know exactly 3 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, you see old Walt Mays going home for the mail. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, there comes Cedric. <laughs> 
I wonder if he's going to move over where the big fork along. Not unless they got a pinball machine over there. <laughs> <laughs> More likely. He's got to be where they want to live. Wonderful world. Here, yeah, howdy, Cedric. Come on in. What can we do for you today? Oh, uh, let's see now. <laughs> what did I come in here for? Uh, some peanut butter? Uh, no, Mom, I don't think so. You generally get some of that. Let's see now. Oh, I recollect. I didn't want nothing. Nothing? No, Mom. Uh, Mr. Dick told me to bring you this telegram. Telegram? Oh, my goodness. That must be about the truck line. I'll give it to Lom, Cedric. No, you read it, Abner. I don't want to even look at the thing. Oh, well, all right. Here, hand it here, Cedric. So good. What if I did want some peanut butter? Now, be quiet, Cedric. Uh, Dick Huddleston, Pine Ridge, Arkansas. Decision reached by committee. Stop. I reckon what they stop, a launch or something? I stop just means the end of a sentence. Oh, Edwards questionnaire, very damaging. Stop. Oh, I was fair to that. However, Pine Ridge truck line renewed for two... Renewed for two years. Renewed for two years. Yeah. Does he show us say that? Right there, right there, black and ink. Renewed for two years because of heavy increase in transportation of secondhand articles by Buster V. Davenport. Buster V. Yeah. Well, I'll be dead. <laughs> Here, yeah, we've been worrying ourselves to death trying to cure Grandpap's amnesia, and it's the one thing that saved Pine Ridge. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I don't get long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the town's truck line has finally been saved. And for a very unexpected reason, Grandpappy's fears, or rather Buster V. Davenport's huge imports of second-hand articles from the county seat, caused the state officials to renew the truck franchise for two years. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner, Cedric, Ulysses S. Quincy and Grandpa Masters gathered at Lum's house for the weekly meeting of the Golden Era Discussion Club. This. Yeah, that's it, Ulysses. Just sit right down there any place. Yeah, okay, Lum. Now, here's why I want you fellas to get here early tonight. Instead of having a usual discussion on some high-class culture subject, besides I figure we're getting pretty cultured anyway... Yeah, ought to be by this time. Ought to slow down a little and let the rest of the town sort of catch up with us. Yeah, ought to do it. Well, instead of having a regular meeting, we're we're going to make the meeting tonight a sort of a tribute to Grandpap. To Grandpap? Yeah, for saving the truck line to Pine Ridge. Oh. Uh, you fellas all know about that, don't you? Well, I know the truck line was renewed for two years long, but I never know that Grandpap was the one that done it. Well, it was a state transportation committee that actually done the reno. But the reason they done it was on account of Grandpap having all that second-hand stuff hauled down here from the county seat. Oh, all this stuff he's been selling around town here, huh? Yeah, them sewing machines and ice boxes and uh, vacuum cleaners and all that stuff. So I figure we ought to do something nice for him. Well, I figure you're just right about it, Mom. Or to do something nice. Well, I yeah. still got five free games coming on the pinball machine over at Luke Spears Restaurant. I'd be proud to give them to Mr. Grandpap. Well, I don't think he'd much like that, Cedric. Oh, I don't know. That's what I'd like to get for a present, I know. Yeah, well, it's mighty thought of you to think of it anyway, Cedric. Uh, what do you have in mind, Long? Well, I figured that, first of all, each one of you fellas can get up and say something nice about Grandpap. Just a few words. Grandpa Master, too? Well, it would be nice if we could wake him up long enough for him to say a little something. But 
I don't know, though. I'm feared he'd just get mad if we disturbed him, get up and say the wrong thing, spile everything. That's just about what he do. Yeah, you better just let him sit there and snooze, I reckon, Mom. Yeah, and then when you fellas all get done, I'll get up and present him with the present and make a speech. A speech? Yeah. Uh-oh, I got feared of that. I thought you said we was going to be nice to Grandpa. Well, we are. Well, Lom, Grandpa don't want to sit there and listen to you tell how many foot of snow you walk barefooted to when you was a young one. I ain't giving that speech tonight. I'm talking on a different subject altogether. It don't matter what subject you start out on, Lom. You always work back to that barefoot business. I don't know how you do it, but I don't as you always manage to work it in some way. Well, I'd sort of like to hear that again myself, though. There's one part of it I ain't got quite learnt by heart yet. I, I'd like to get that if I could. Hell, I believe I'd better go on back home, fellas. Now, yeah, wait a minute, fellas, door. wait a minute. I promise you I won't talk over one or two minutes. The fact is, about all I'm aiming to do is just make a couple of remarks and then award him the present. Cross your heart? Cross my heart. Well, all right, then. Uh, what's the present we're going to give him? Well, you know how he loves to smoke a pipe. Oh, yeah, Lord me. When he used to sit around the store reading the almanac, why, he always had that old corn cob pipe in his mouth, puffing away on it all day long. Well, yeah, well, he'd even got to where he could smoke a pipe while he was taking an afternoon nap. Yeah? Leastways, that's what Aunt Charity claimed. Well, that's the truth. I saw him do it. Well, I saw him sit over there after he'd played checkers for a while and sort of doze with the pipe going. Oh, he'll doze and puff right along with it. Light it in his sleep, I believe. Is that what you got for Mr. Grandpa, a pipe? Yeah. Yeah, I got him a good one, too. Expensive one. Cost my knife five dollars. Five dollars? For one pipe? Just one. For the land's sake. Well, Grandpa never paid over, oh, 15 cents or for a corn cob pipe in his life. Facts is, he generally bought them 10 sanders we got down there. Well, this ain't no corn cob pipe, though. Huh? I figured Grandpa deserves something like this. Well, he does deserve something nice, all right, considering what he's done for Pine Ridge, I reckon. Well, I know it'll tickle him to death, I know that. Can we see the pipe, Mr. Long? Oh, sure, I've got it right here in this box. Pretty fancy box, too, ain't it? <laughs> Doggy, that is a dandy. That, that, let me see it, Long. Yeah. Well, I do know. Oh, that's a dandy. A dandy. It's got a lot of wood on it, too. Yeah. That's yeah. supposed to be good, Ed Beckley told me. Oh, you got it down to the drugstore, huh? Yeah. Well, personally, I like one with a little more curve in the stem, Long. Yeah, well, this is for Grandpap. It's genuine briar, too. Set it right on the side there. See there? Yeah, let me see it hanging here, Long. Huh. What's these letters here mean, this M-A-S? It's initials. Milford Avery Spears. Oh, oh sure. That. Oh, wait a minute, so Long. He still thinks he's Buster V. Davenport from Toledo. He won't know this pipe is supposed to be for him. Yes, he will. Just look on the other side there. Huh? Turn it over. Oh, oh. Well, I'd... B-V-D. <laughs> I had both sets of initials put on there. That way, he can use the pipe now when he's Buster V. Davenport. And if he gets shut of his amnesia and goes back to being Melford Spears again, he won't have to throw the pipe away. My dog is that's good thinking, Mom. You're a genius, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't. Any above average fella that studied up the same thing. Well, I think he could anyway. It ain't actual nothing. Besides, Ed helped a little. Oh. Uh, fact is, I reckon you could almost say it was his idea. He was the one that brought it up, sort of. Yeah, well, whoever done it, it's a good idea. Old Grandpapa be the happiest one human in the whole world when we give him this pipe tonight. <laughs> Look here, did you see it, Cedric? Yes, Mom. Wish I loved to smoke. I believe I could enjoy smoking if it didn't make me so doggone sick. Yeah, well, time you get as old as Grandpap, why, maybe you'll get over that, Cedric. Right here, Long. You better put this pipe back in the box there before Grandpap gets it yeah. on him see Yeah, I think we better study up what each one of us is going to say about him, too. Some of them nice remarks we're going to make, huh? Yeah. Well, let's see. What are you going to say, Cedric? Oh, I don't know. I could give Mr. Long's speech as long as he ain't going to use it. I got it all memorized except that one part there. No, no, don't give that, Cedric, whatever you do. No, Cedric, you're supposed to say something about Grandpa. Yeah, something like, uh... 
doggy sort of for to think of something. I know it. I've been studying about it myself. Ought to be something nice. That's what makes it so hard, I reckon. Can't talk about his checker plan because he cheats a bit. He wouldn't say no, that. No, don't mention that. Couldn't say he's honest, I guess. That wouldn't be much of a speech. He'll just get up and say a feller's honest, would he? No. Could say he's a good whittler, but that don't mean much. No. Yeah, he whittles pretty good. Got that front porch of Dick Huddleston store down on himself twice in the last four years. Yeah. I wish I was brainy like Ulysses here. I know he'll study up something smart to say. Well, it don't have to be nothing elaborate, just some simple sentiments. Like, say, for instance, uh, well, you might say that Pine Ridge has long been proud of Grandpap, even when he was a kid of a boy. All right, doggies, I believe I'll use that. That sounds good. Uh, wait a minute, too long. Grandpap don't think he ever lived in Pine Ridge. He thinks that he comes from Toledo. I think that's right, ain't it? Yeah. I clean forgot about that. He thinks he's just a stranger in town. Yeah. Can't very well talk about his boyhood in Toledo because none of us has ever been there. Well, Grandpap ain't neither. No, but he thinks he has. Yeah. Well, anyway, that illuminates his boyhood. And as long as he thinks he's a stranger, we can't talk about being old friends with him. No, can't do that. Maybe we ought to just forget about it. Each of us making a little speech and concentrate on giving him the pipe. I believe that'd be the best thing to do. Maybe we could all sort of hand it, hand it to him together. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, unless Ulysses there has got some brainy remarks studied up by now. Have you, Ulysses? Well, I don't know, Lon, but I sort of thought we might get my young and little Elry over here to recite patty cake for him. Little Elry, huh? Yes, sir, that's the cutest thing you ever heard, Lon. That boy's just smart as a whip. Yeah, I'm sure we ought to forget that speech-making now. Oh. After all, the pipe will mean more to him than any fancy words we might say to him. Might just embarrass him that way. Why, sure, it might embarrass us, too, if we'd stood up and then couldn't think of nothing to say. Yeah, every time he lights up that pipe, he'll think of us. Sure. Maybe he'll think about us being grateful to him for keeping Pine Ridge going. He'll think about us all day long, and if he thinks about us when he what, lights it. What do the rest of you fellas think? Don't you reckon that's the best thing to do? That's okay here. Okay here. I'll still throw in them free pinball games over. Oh, Cedric, nobody wants nothing like that. Yeah, well, you. you ought to get over that, too, Cedric. I was reading here just the other day where pinball machines is unlegal in some states. Are they sure enough? Yes, sir. So Cedric's liable to get sent to the penitentiary if he ain't careful. Uh-oh. If they do, I hope they send me to one where they got a pinball machine. Not, I'd hate to have all that time on my hands and no pinball machine around. Where are they like, oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, that must be Grandpap now. You want me to let him in, Lon? Yeah, and recollect now, don't, nobody let on we got a surprise for Grandpap. Just act natural. Okay. Well, howdy, 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 howdy. Well, good evening, Grandpap, or Mr. Davenport, come right in. Here, I'll take you cold. Yeah, thank you. Sorry I'm late, but I've been looking for a new boarding house to live in. Uh-huh, I can just go right on in there and take that chair right there by Lom. Uh, evening, Lom. Yes, sir, been out looking for a new place. Uh, evening, Mr. Davenport. Evening, Cedric. Uh, no, on Ulysses S. Quincy, that's Cedric over there. Oh, excuse me, I can't keep you fellas straight. I sort of hate to leave Miss Simpson's boarding house, but I ain't going to live under the same roof with that Professor Sloan. Yeah, just sit down, Mr. Davenport. We got something special for tonight. Well, good, good. Oh, I don't say Professor Sloan's a crook or nothing like that, but supper ain't hardly over by night when he gets out a pipe and starts puffing on the pigeon-toed thing for all he's worth. I just can't stand it. Can't stand it? Well, lo me, you smoke up all the time yourself. I do. Why, sure. Now, listen here. Tobacco has never touched the lips of Buster E. Davenport. By Jimmy, it never will, neither. Huh? All right, that's enough talking about me. What's this special thing you fellas got on for tonight? (laughs) 